Welcome to the Sanford Contractors pregame show, only on the NFHS Network. Chris Lambert here with James Alverson with the North Carolina High School Athletic Association, who's got a long title, an important title, but I don't want to mess it up, so I'm going to allow him to tell us exactly what it is that he does. Sir? Well, Chris, uh, it is the Assistant Commissioner for Media Relations, Publications, and Special Events, so not really all that no. important, but it, it is fun. I do get an opportunity to work with a lot of great student athletes and a lot of great people all across the state, and that's the main thing. Without notes, there was no way I was going to get that out, so <laughs> well done. Um, the high school playoffs are, are underway here throughout the state of North Carolina. Eight classifications, so a lot of logistics and moving parts for you guys. Talk a little bit about what it means in terms of your, your energy level and effort this time of year? Well, you know, there are eight classifications that are going on. We're down to the final eight and all of them all the way across the state. Great games going on all over. So uh, when I go home tonight from the ball game, I'll actually pull out my laptop, start finding scores from all the other games. We'll tweet those out uh, and do the, do the social media thing for the association. But uh, also the other great thing about it, when you got eight state championships, uh, we're unique. A lot of states have eight state championships, but we play them at four different facilities. Uh, and so we've got great facility partners between Wake Forest, UNC, NC State, and Duke that we bring in. Uh, we play in some of the greatest facilities in the country for state championships, and we really believe that. And so working with those schools, with our host schools from our member schools like Jordan and Northern Durham who help us out and several other of our member schools, uh, just getting all the volunteers, get all the security, get all those different folks put together so that we can make sure that we pull off a first-class championship event for our student athletes. Being good at what you do takes commitment. At Sanford Contractors, we've been committed for 50 years, committed to high-quality construction services and trusted partner relationships. We started in 1969 and through smart and consistent growth, now offer our partners more services than ever before in bridge construction, commercial building, site development, and utility utility construction. Sanford Contractors, building with trust for 50 years. Learn more at SanfordContractors.com. You are watching the NFHS Network Sanford Contractors pregame show with Krista Lambert, Rob Patterson, and myself, Nathan Cochran. Hello, everybody. We, uh, we're on, here, on hand here as Lee County in the wonderful town of Sanford, North Carolina, hosts its first semifinal playoff game since 2005. It's hard to imagine. Wow. wow. 2005 is the last time Sanford got, or Sanford, Lee County got to the uh, the semifinals. And this these two teams, New Hanover coming in at 13-1, and one, has reeled off 10 straight wins after an overtime loss to Jack Britt early in the season. There have been questions all along every step of the way about, well, has this team played – you know, enough stiff competition and so on and so forth with Lee County all year, but New Hanover to a certain extent too. Uh, these teams have earned their way here. There has been nothing easy about the road, and this, I would have to say, has validated the seeding with your one and two seed coming in here. These are the best two teams in the East, and uh, there is no telling what's going to happen on the field tonight, guys. And something interesting that doesn't happen very often the one and two seed for the West is also playing tonight in Weddington and Watauga. So no matter what, we're going to have a one or two matchup next week for the state championship there at Carter Finley. Yeah, Weddington, of course, the defending 2A champion. New Hanover was the 2017 3A state champ. And Lee County and, and New Hanover tied together in a couple of, of ways. Um, you guys probably don't know this. Sanford Central, which was the precursor to Lee County, won the state championship in 1926. State champ in 1927, New Hanover. No kidding. How funny is that? How do New you Hanover won it in 27 and 28, <laughs> coming off of Sanford's victory, Sanford Central's victory there in 26. And then they're tied together again more recently because last year both of these teams went out in the 3A playoffs to Dudley. Dudley came in here in the first round as a 14 seed, knocked off the second seeded Yellow Jackets, and then went down to Wilmington and beat New Hanover, who was a six seed. And it validated everybody who said, if there are 13 teams in the eastern part of North Carolina that are better than Dudley, I haven't seen any of them. <laughs> um, Dudley, Dudley was badly underranked, but uh, they, they've had some early struggles. Um, Lee County held up well against, well against Dudley and uh, should have probably won that ball game. They went down 29-26. They went down to Wilmington and blew the brakes off of New Hanover. So these teams are tied together in a couple kind of ways. Uh, one of these two teams is going to be playing for a state championship at Carter-Finley next weekend. The other one is not. 
Um, New Hanover comes in with a senior-laden team. If you look at this team through the stat sheets, across the profiles, seniors everywhere. Um, and those are seniors that were all sophomores on that state championship two years ago. This is uncharted territory for Lee County. First Lee County team ever to win 14 ball games in a year. They're looking to stretch it out to 15 and get to play a 16th game. Guys, what have you seen in the lead up to this game? From New Hanover, I've seen a lot of multiple formations offense. They're going to really throw a lot of things at you. Um, in the short film that I got to watch and talk to Coach Bordeaux there Tuesday night at Classic Nissan, and I think it's going to be a really fun, fun matchup to see. Also, someone to watch for the New Hanover Wildcats is their nose tackle. Everyone's been talking about him this week. 6'2", 341 pounds, and we watched him in warm-ups. That is a big man, not a big boy. He is a big man. Chris, two things to keep an eye on. One, special teams. That is where Lee kind of separates themselves from a lot of their competition, and look for that tonight. Also, turnovers. Neither team turns the ball over much, so I think the team that – loses that battle is going to have a hard hard row. All right, for Lee County, question marks coming in about the leader of that defense. Middle linebacker number five, Larry Baldwin, hurt his hamstring at the end of the game with Cleveland last week. He is a go. We'll see how it plays out. There's a contingency plan uh, if he's not able to stay in there, but he, he, he they're not going to keep him off the field. Absolutely not. Uh, Makai Stanley, the uh, senior ta standout tailback for um, New Hanover. Just received an offer from Campbell University, his best offer yet, about an hour and a half before kick. So interesting things going on. We're going to go down to the field. Trey Underwood and the Lee County Yellow Jackets are ready to kick it off. New Image Media presents the NFHS Game of the Week. Brought to you by Crossroads Ford. Big city deals from a dealer with a hometown field. It's my favorite time of the year. Football is back. I would like to personally invite you to come down for your next new or pre-owned vehicle purchase. With one of the largest new and pre-owned inventories in the area, come see us today for discounts that the competition simply can't match or beat. If you drive in Sanford, why not buy in Sanford? Come see me, the deal maker. Come and get that big town deal with that small town feel right here at Crossroads Ford in Sanford. Trey Underwood and these Yellow Jackets, as the smoke clears, oftentimes come out and do unconventional things in the kicking game. Um, be interested here to see whether they play this straight. Lee County has really made special teams a priority this year throughout the entire season. They can really throw the kitchen sink at you on special teams. They can do anything they want with Trey Underwood there. All right, the kick is a high spinner. Fielded at the 15, back across the 20. Out to about the 25 and met by a host of jackets. Hit hard. And we'll see this new Hanover offense for the first time, led by senior quarterback Chase Nixon. Nixon jumps off tape at you really quickly with his accuracy, Rob. He really does. Uh, good athletic lineage there. Trot Nixon's son uh, kind of bided his time early in his career. Um, he is going to be a different kind of quarterback for Lee County to defend. All right, he's, he's athletic, but not what you'd call a dual-threat quarterback. If you don't account for him and things break down, he can get you 15 or 20, but they won't be looking to feature him in the run. Instead, lined up next to him. That's a big man. Makai Stanley, number 10, 6 2, 2 15. Instead, he gets it out wide to Jaheim Marshall, who is the primary threat in this Wildcat passing game. And he'll get about 15 on the catch. Jaheim Marshall, the senior, comes in with almost a, almost a granny. Almost receiving yards and catches. That's big at the high school level. 51 catches and 14 touchdowns. And he is by far their primary target. It'll be interesting to see how Lee County chooses to defend him. Well, you'll see him featured in the passing game. He'll be featured as a returner and uh, just one of those young men that is explosive and can blow the lid off a of defense. Jumbo set here. Jumbo set is Wildcat with Stanley set to take the snap from the gun. Takes it around the left side. And is wrapped up. Nice sound tackling there as he's wrapped up and brought down after a short gain. Sincere Goldston led the Jackets there. 
Second and about seven coming up. Lee County defense, of course, led by this front four. Number 10, right there in the middle of your screen, Desmond Evans, the number one recruit in the state of North Carolina. Headed to the University of North Carolina, and right next to him, DeAndre Dingle Prince will be playing his college football at App State next year. All right, Nixon under center. Brings Ferris in motion. Hands up the middle to Stanley. Stanley lowered his shoulders, going nowhere. Good stop for the Jackets. Wow. TJ Johnson, the sophomore tailback, who also spends time at linebacker and is in there for Baldwin right now. Um, I talked to Coach Burdu, Steve Burdu, the head coach of the Lee County Yellow Jackets, before the game and said, hey, if Larry can't stay in there, what's the plan? And I figured he'd tell me they were going to move some parts around. He said, nope, 34 can get it done. Well, one thing that helps, obviously, that defensive line really leaves their linebackers clean to make plays. All right, now we now got a tight trips to the far side. New Hanover coming out in a completely different look. Spread it out. Nixon takes the snap, rolls to his right. Pressure's coming from Evans. Gets it out there. It's high. Caught at the sticks, and the receiver gets a foot down. Needed six, got seven, and that'll be a Wildcat first down. New Hanover staves on the field. Great pressure there by Desmond Evans at the defensive end spot. He recognized that, shed his block. Got his hands in the face of the quarterback as he ma was making the throw. Great oh, they, stand for the Yellow Jackets. They ruled it incomplete. They changed oh, the call wow. on the field. And, uh, Nate, you seem to be the only one of the three of us that realized what was going on. <laughs> All right, so that will bring out the punting squad for the Wildcats. They'll kick to a trap Tyreek McKendall here. back deep to receive this. Here comes the pressure. It's a low liner. McKendall's going to field it on a hop at the 20. Fakes a man at the 30 out across the 35. Bounced out of bounds at the 37-yard line. First and 10 jackets. Colin Johnson, senior quarterback. What's his record now, Chris? You've been keeping a tally 37 of 37-2 and two as a starting quarterback. I hope I get to ask you that question one more time next I, week. I hope that you do, too. <laughs> Colin Johnson, senior quarterback, comes out uh, 6'1", 170. A year ago, I wouldn't ever let these words cross my, my lips, but uh, a true dual-threat quarterback who has done a lot in the last six weeks on the ground throws it out there to senior Tim Lett, who can't hold on, and it'll be second and ten. Johnson, the senior quarterback, a lineup in the backfield with senior tailback A.J. Bullware, number four, the top returning rusher in all of North Carolina this past year. This year's right at about 2,000 yards when you uh, add in his playoff yardage. Great vision and a threat to go every time he touches the ball. Fights through a tackle and picks up four on the play. Third and six coming up for the Jackets. You know, Cavill, uh, Yellow Jackets not afraid to run inside where Bancroft is playing that nose tackle. So this is a, this is a, a challenge for them. It'll be really interesting to see how they adapt. All right, Johnson barks out signals, takes a snap, rolls to his right. Has McKendall's going to need some do, do some work. Really weird play there. It looked like half the offensive line didn't move. Wonder if there was a called hard count that the ball went on one instead. Well, McKendall only gets a yard on that, and that'll leave fourth and four. And Trey Underwood and the punt team come out onto the field. Trey Underwood, the fourth leading kicking scorer in North Carolina State history, also handles the punting duties. That's a horrible kick. He'd like to have that one back. Wow. Came off the side of his foot and went straight up in the air and like a duck hook, wasn't it? Yeah, really different. I tell you what, now last week he moved the field huge on that one punt that really, I think, really kind of made the difference at a time when Lee County was really struggling in the first half. Well, and, and from a scoring standpoint, hit a 47-yarder that was big in the game as well. So Trey Underwood, an important piece last week, gets out to a slow start today. New Hanover's ball first and 10 at the 45 as Nixon leads the offense back out on the field. Here comes a man in motion. The hand is on the jet sweep to Marshall. Marshall dances through a tackle and picks up a couple on the play. Lee County doing a really good job of reading that, figuring that out, and swarming to the ball, shedding blocks. That had the potential to get big pretty quick. They had a lot of blockers on that short side of the field. So good job by the Yellow Jacket defense. You know, Nathan, to our conversation earlier, I have not seen New Hanover in the same formation twice. Nope, I haven't. 
Showing empty here. We've got empty trips to the wide side. Lee County looking to struggle to adjust a little bit. All right, Nixon surveys the defense. Takes the snap, drops under pressure. Quick screen to Marshall. Good nice read. Played. Well read on the play there by the Jackets. Number 43, Darion Jennings on the play there. Great read identifying tunnel. That's the freshman who just continues to grow by leaps and bounds every week. JoJo Jennings becoming an integral part of this defense. He is going to be a really fun young man to watch as he progresses up through his years here at Lee County with Coach Steve Bordeaux. He, that young man will flat be a football player. He already is. Third and ten here for the Wildcats. No score yet in the game. Seven and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Showing a gap pressure here. Nixon takes a snap. Oh, oh, oh play by oh. Desmond Evans. Desmond Evans knocks it down. And he had visions of wrapping that thing up and carrying it to the house. Instead, he forces the punt, fourth and 10 coming up. I tell you what, it was a great play by Evans, but Jennings was sitting right behind the running back on that screen. You almost wonder if that ball had gotten off, would that have been a pick six? Great job by Lee County to identify that. I wonder if we're gonna see a little bit of Union Pine-esque tonight, lots and lots of screens. All right, here comes the pressure. Evans not quite able to get there. Nice high hanging punt, bounces out at the 30, and the Jackets take back uh, take back over. Team's just trading jabs right now, Rob. Yeah, usually enough, uh, kind of feeling each other out a little bit, somewhat of what you might expect from uh, two really solid football teams. Kind of incumbent on Lee to maybe change the field position here on offense. All right, as a lot of teams do, the entire offense is looking over at the sideline to get the signal. Looks coach like Steve Verdu, the head coach, also acts as offensive coordinator. I asked him once, you need to bring in a, another coordinator? He's like, why? It's my offense. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Johnson from the gun, hands to Bullware. Bullware's got a little space. If he gets oh, the edge, he can go. One man to beat, and he's forced out at the 45. 29 on the carry for A.J. Bullware, and getting him out of the gate quick is important, guys. Oh, most definitely. Um, New Hanover coming out and kind of a pat did 3-4 defense, and you can run on this defense if you find the creases. All right, this is a Lee County team that feeds off momentum, and if they get rolling, they have a tendency to put one to, to make one big play into four or five really quickly. This time, Bullware reverses his field and gets a yard. Almost uncanny, guys, the way this team feeds off one another on both sides of the ball. You know, Chris, we talked about that. I don't. I have never had a team that can snowball in a good effect as quickly as Lee County does. It seems like they get one play, all of a sudden they got four, and they're up by two touchdowns. It is. It is unbelievable. And if you don't believe us, ask Anson County. Oh, oh yeah. Who came in here and beat Lee County up and down this field, and then gave up four touchdowns in about three and a half minutes. Let's keep an eye on Bancroft in the middle. He really snuffed that kick play there. Lee's going to have to handle him inside to run between the tackles. All right, Johnson from the gun, second and nine. Drops, quick screen to McKendall. McKendall can outrun some folks. He has it out across the 35-yard line in plus territory, and that'll be a Lee County first down. You know, Nathan, you were talking about kind of Union pine screens, but Lee County runs that tunnel screen more than any team I see in the conference. <laughs> oh, yeah, they love it. You didn't watch enough tape on Union Pines. <laughs> <laughs> A.J. Bullware with the carry straight across the middle, and he'll get about five on the play. Bullware, a good, tough runner for a guy that's as, as explosive as he is. Second and short coming up for the Jackets. And this is a great, great crowd on hand for Lee County. I knew it was going to be a good one when I pulled up and couldn't find parking. This is what we've been waiting on, guys. All right, the hand is to Bullware. Up the middle, Bullware. he's got space. Now running through tackles, and have another jacket. First down inside the REMAX red zone. Great tackle there by number 33 from New Hanover. If that young man doesn't make that tackle, A.J. Bullware's in the house for six right now. Well, you got to feel like the penetration they're getting up front, He's going to get a couple of those long ones before the end of the day. New Hanover is going to have to adjust because if they're relying on one guy to get him every time he runs the ball, it could turn into a really long night. Well, keep an eye on Colin Johnson pulling that ball at some point too. 
Johnson from the gun, pulls it, looking down the field, scrambles. Now he breaks, pocket breaks down. Johnson takes off. He'll be close to another first down. Colin Johnson doing what senior quarterbacks do, making smart plays. It's interesting. They took Bancroft out from the nose position there, kind of changed the front up a little bit, uh, ran a little stun against Lee, which they picked up pretty well. Lee County showing traditional doubles formation here. I would not expect to see the ball in the air, though. Second and a foot from just inside the 10-yard line. There's the hand to Bullwear. Bullwear's, Bullwear's in. All right. Close to the he goal line. In. It's going to be a first up. and goal no. from about a foot oh. away. I thought he was in. I'm telling you, if you're going to keep counting on one guy to bring him down, it's going to be a long night. Okay, now Lee, Lee's going to go with a two-back formation, bringing Jennings in the game. This is their power-type formation at the goal line. Well, and something to keep an eye on, though, is you lose an option with Larry Baldwin being banged up. Baldwin is as good a short yardage back as you ever want to see. Not that we got a Bullwear false start. Is not a good catch. I saw it all. It was a left tackle. All right. So, first and goal now at around the six yard line. Ooh, and that's that changes the. It does. Changes your thought process. Although, looks like Lee's going to stay in that jumbo set, though. New Hanover hasn't shown yet that they can stop that interior run of, of Bullwear. All right, that's the freshman linebacker lined up as the H-back right now, Darian Jennings. He leads it. Bullwear picks his way through and it'll be close to the goal line. And they've got it. Touchdown. It was a late call, but Lee County breaks a 0-0 tie and gets on the board with 3.57 to go. A wow. whole lot easier than the first drive, wasn't it, fellas? A lot easier and a good long drive. We talked about Lee changing the field position. Well, heck, they just went ahead and scored. And we haven't seen a whole lot of this 341-pound nose tackle, but I would venture to say that keeping him out there on the field a lot probably works in the Jackets' favor. What do you think, guys? I agree. Big boys don't like a lot of time on the field. They get a little worn out, don't they, uh, Mr. Cocker? I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson Lamb on to hold for the oh, extra point. Another false start. Another false movement. start. Got to clean that up. Kick was up and good, but they'll have to do that one again. Jackson Lamb holding. We haven't called his name tonight. The hero last week. Played the ball game of his life. Two picks on defense and caught really a game-changing touchdown at the end of the first half on a game where Steve Berdue conceded. They were just trying to set up for a field goal. Yeah. Uh, Jackson Lamb didn't get the message and took it 35 yards for a touchdown and changed the momentum, um, and it never flipped back around. Oh, little, my goodness. That could get a hand on large. That, no, he just missed that just one. Just whipped. Wow. Well, they were, they were really showing hard pressure to the left side of Lee County's offensive line, and, you know, sometimes that will impact. You start seeing that pressure, your eye lifts up a little bit on the kick. All right. Underwood, a little bit of the yips going on perhaps. Biggest game of his life, certainly. But uh, the senior that's generally cool as a cucumber. Not a great showing now, first on the punt and then on the extra point attempt. Nonetheless, Lee County holds a six-point lead, just under four minutes to go in the first quarter. Guys, we've seen New Hanover on offense twice now. What do you expect them to tweak as we move forward? I think they're going to go to a little bit heavier set that uh, tight formation they showed earlier and see if they can kind of ground and pound this this jacket defense for a little while. Um, the screens Lee County has prepared for obviously pretty well. Um, so I'd be interested to see if they line up and see if uh, Lee County can square up, go to go toe to toe with them. All right, right here is where you see whether the size of the stage changes the thought process because I don't think I can remember seeing Lee County kick deep on two consecutive kicks. If they do here, that's probably a good indicator of the type of respect they've got for this squad, and they don't. High spinner, oof, nice play on the on the uh, spinning kick. Quintel Waddell is able to come up and catch it, and if that gets to the ground, it's trouble for everybody. It almost appeared New Hanover was surprised by that, and well, that's something you, gotta, you would think they would have easily prepared for because particularly to that spot on the field, Lee kicks there a lot. That's Anyone who's watched thing. Lee County this year yeah. knows that they're going to be kicking to that spot at some point in time during the night. Well, and, and guys, I think it talks, it speaks to the psychology of this Lee County coaching staff 
I was half joking about the respect thing, but this is this is how they play, and they're not going to change it if it's a state semifinal game. Nathan, All right, called it. Makai Stanley in a heavy package from the Wildcat. There goes Bancroft in motion, and nothing. And gets a hold. Good wow. gracious. How do you not call that? Bancroft, 74, literally grabbed number 54 of the Jackets and twirled him around. Well, and you'd think it'd be hard for a guy that big to hide from the officials, but apparently he pulled it off. <laughs> He's second right and, there. Second well, <laughs> and nine coming up. I tell you what, it is clear early. Lee County's defensive line is owning this game right now. Yes, sir. All right, Nixon back into the game. Heavy formation, two wide right. Nixon rolling to his right. Under pressure, gets it out late accurately to Marshall. Nice open field tackle on the play by Jaden Chalmers, and that'll bring up a third down. Say, Lee moves their defensive line so much. They kind of um, did kind of a knockout formation. They adjusted a little bit to the left to the strong side of New Hanover's formation. Um, and you will see Lee move their defensive linemen around a great deal tonight. All right, interesting personnel package here. Third and about three. Jaheim Marshall, who is most definitely the number one receiving option out of the game. The heavy package back in. Bancroft at fullback. There goes Stanley into the line and just has oh, nowhere. nowhere. Guys, that is not going to work against wow. this defensive front. This must. He was stonewalled, gentlemen. And I think that's a gracious spot. Well, the spot and where the stick is at on the far side are two entirely different things. Okay, so interesting to see what happens. This is fourth and what? One fourth and, and about two. I, th I think the stick is a little generous okay. over there. So let's see if New Hanover tries anything here or if they play safe. Lined up in their traditional trap door punt. All right, Owen Daffer on to punt. He is the senior kicker, handles the punt duties. Does it all, and he's a good one. It is short there to Stanley, is. and no, and he, he will short. not get it. He is short, jacket ball. Wow. Not even close, and they saw it coming a mile away. Rob, great call on that. Well, that, they kind of lined up just slightly different, a little bit to kind of show that, but Lee County was all over it. Once again, Lee County's defensive line making plays on every down. And guys, we talked about how this team plays downhill with momentum. If you're new Hanover, you cannot give up a big play here. No. You know, we talked early in the playoffs, Lee had not had a lot of games where they were down. Well, new Hanover hasn't either. So they get down a little bit. Interesting to see how they might respond. Well, and you got this great home crowd here. You hear bells and everything else going off down there. It's amazing. Johnson from the gun, fakes to Bullware, looking down the field. Here comes the shot. Nope, Johnson's going to keep. Has positive yardage. Needs to tuck that ball away. Takes a big hit after a gain of about six. But uh, that's that is senior quarterbacking right there. You know, coming out of a coming out of a turnover situation, you want to take that big shot. The quarterback knows it. The staff knows it. Everybody else does. To have the discipline to pull that down and take a couple instead of forcing the ball down the field really shows the benefit of having an upper class uh, quarterback. We got a flag over here. I'm not sure. It looks like they're backing up Lee County. Is it halt? Oh, illegal motion. Wow. Tough to see the yellow flags on a yellow field. This Bermuda did well all year, but it has gone dormant now. Yes, it, it is definitely <laughs> dormant. Now, I do have to tell you, I was on the field before the game. It's not in bad shape. It's not a slick track, um, which might surprise folks watching at home. But uh, it should hold up tonight. And given where it was at three weeks ago when we started the playoffs, that's kind of amazing. Johnson fakes, pulls it down, now looking deep for McKendall and overthrows him by about two steps. Hey guys, keep an eye on something. Lee kind of went to that tight double stack formation and New Hanover did not honor that motion. So let's see if Lee comes back a little bit later with a jet sweep out of that same alignment. All right, second 15 now. Lee County trying to turn the big special teams play into points. Minute 23 left in the first quarter. Clock st stopped, excuse me. All right, Johnson hands to Bullware. Bullware's into the secondary oh. boy, and I tell you. Woo string tackle there by number 33 from New Hanover. If Jack Dietrich just saved a touchdown. Wow, that was uh, that was a probably a touchdown saving tackle right there. <laughs> Only got four on the play, almost had 40. 
All right, Johnson from the gun. Big third down. Trying to trying the hard count to see if he can get five free ones. Almost did. Jaden Chalmers and Tim Lett split wide right. Jackson Lamb and another receiver to the left. Johnson wrapped up. He's going down. Got to get rid of it. Got to get rid of it. You know, Nathan, that was tough. New Hanover's in a three-man front. We're able to rush the passer with three and get to Johnson, and uh, that's a tough play on third down. That, well, is, that is what you call a coverage sack, guys. The uh, New Hanover secondary had locked up the Yellow Jackets receivers. Colin had nowhere to get that ball out to, so he tried to make the best out of something, but it just wasn't there. Well, an interesting route combination there by the Jackets is everybody tried to get down the field. Um, and there was nobody underneath. Another, another not great punt by Trey Underwood. By Trey Underwood. That one though, Under I, that one I felt like he tried to angle toward the sideline. Based on his body language coming off the field, I don't think that's what he intended. Um, but not a great night so far for Underwood. Uh, you know, he's over there talking to Steve Womack, the trainer right now. I'm kind of curious if there's not something maybe going on with Well, him. as he came over and talked and met with Coach Purdue on the way off the field, he looked a little gimpy, um, and you're right. Now the trainer said it over to meet with him, and hopefully he's okay because he is an integral part of this team, a team that truly believes in three phases of football. Now they have a good young backup kicker that played JV ball, and he's been practicing with the varsity. So if they got to go to something, they feel pretty confident in that. Is there anything they don't have good on JV down on that on the farm? No, sir. Okay. <laughs> Stanley from the gun wrapped up. And Good play. I, they're going to have to take this out of their playbook, New Hanover is. This is not going to work against this defensive front. Well, it's pretty much the only play they're running out of it, so Lee is just coming hard with their backers inside and getting great penetration. All right, that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter. After one, Lee County up 6-0 on the visiting New Hanover Wildcats. We'll be right back after these messages. New Image Media presents the NFHS Game of the Week. Brought to you by Crossroads Ford. Big city deals from a dealer with a hometown feel. It's my favorite time of the year. Football is back. I would like to personally invite you to come down for your next new or pre-owned vehicle purchase. With one of the largest new and pre-owned inventories in the area, come see us today for discounts that the competition simply can't match or beat. If you drive in Sanford, why not buy in Sanford? Come see me, the deal maker. Come and get that big town deal with that small town feel right here at Crossroads Ford in Sanford. You are watching the NFHS Championship Game of the Week brought to you by Crossroads Ford. Big city deals with a small town feel. All right, guys, six love thus far for Lee County. Don't know what our cameraman Terry was trying to tell us there. <laughs> okay. 6-0 for Lee County after one. The missed extra point, the only blemish really on that first quarter. New Hanover unable to do anything on offense. Colin Nixon drops, throws, slow developing route, one-on-one -on -one coverage with the future Tar Heel, Jaden Chalmers there trying to find Jaheim Marshall, his namesake, you know, second and 10, excuse me, third and 10. They're trying to avoid the rush. They're putting him in a sprint type look on a lot of their passes, you know, trying to kind of slide the, slide the protection a little bit, uh, put a little pressure on one side of that Lee County defense, hoping the other side doesn't catch up. You know, knowing that that's what they're trying to do, don't you just roll, don't you just keep Evans on his dominant side and leave him out there to harass that. You do. You also sometimes roll a linebacker up, too, to kind of get an extra body up there. All right, big third down for New Hanover, who desperately needs some momentum. Pocket breaks down immediately. Nixon rolling. Ah, nice. Great Good coverage. Play. Great coverage by T.J. Johnson, who's come in and just made play after play, subbing for the injured Larry Baldwin, and yet another punt for New Hanover. Surely no shenanigans coming down the pipe this time, guys. New, New Hanover on that last play had trips with a single on the short side, but they also bring in, brought in a wing back to show which side they were sliding to as an extra blocker. So New Hanover really reeling at the moment um, about this jacket front. This is going to be an interesting call, but I think New Hanover moved first. Well, Desmond Evans agrees with you. We'll see who gets the call here. 
The blocker on that end, Jack Diedrich, pointed Evans. Evans pointed oh. him. Diedrich wins. Evans loses. Oh, yeah, cost I Lee County five. Doesn't really hurt, though. And now it's fourth and five. I don't foresee a trick play coming from New Hanover. Well, isn't that the with point, the five though, yards. Nate? Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Fourth and five. And here comes the punt. Lee County's getting closer, but they haven't got one yet. McKendall backed up, juggles it. Now gives up ground. Back inside his own Ooh. 10 and probably like to have that whole thing to do over again. We got, it looks like, could be a targeting here. The young man from New Hanover came over and led with his with the crown of his helmet as Tyreek McKendall was going down to the ground. This would be a big play can we for get a, County. Can we get a replay of that? I'd like to see the uh, see if we can identify who it was. This would really change field position for Lee. Absolutely. Yeah, would. finally the first break of the game for New Hanover. Uh, McKendall, had he fielded that cleanly, probably would have been okay, but with the juggle and everything else, just couldn't get away from the coverage. Well, this is the only call it can be. I don't know why there's so much discussion. They know the cameras are rolling, yeah. Rob. <laughs> and here, here it comes. You see the replay, and it's the second defender coming up, up right the here. The second guy. Yes, right sir. There. Oh, That's yeah. targeting. That's an easy call. Now, does, is there anything going to come on top of that, I wonder? I did not see a sign for rejection there. Nor did I. But regardless, Lee County gets out from the shadow of their own goalpost and has the ball first and 10 from the 24, which they'll gladly take given where they were. Officials still trying to get themselves reset. All right. New Hanover in that three-man front. Colin Johnson from the gun. Four wideouts. A.J. Bullware, the lone setback. Fakes to Bullware. Now throws it quickly up. Ooh. Young Not able to reel it in. That was Terrius Alston he was trying to find on the screen. Mr. Austin got a little excited there, turned his head before to look downfield before he caught the ball. Well, and Alston, a guy that's, you know, normally the fourth or fifth option in the passing game, a little bit excited there. All right, now the hand is to Bullware. Bullware into the second level oh. and out across the 30 to the 32 is going to leave him about third and three. I tell you guys. AJ's running angry right now. He is. But I tell you, New Hanover is putting their inside backers really close up to the line of scrimmage. It is going to be easy to pop one if you get by first level. I'll tell you guys, and, and, and I'll give this up. I'm sure, even though A.J. Bullware runs angry normally, I'm sure there's a little bit of an additional chip on his shoulder because the murmurs down on the field about Makai Stanley being offered by Campbell just before the game, Campbell didn't offer Bullware. Well, and I think, too, he didn't have, you know, he had a tougher game last week. So, you know, he's the kind of kid that's going to want to rebound. From yeah, him. for sure. All right. Unable to convert on third down, though, and Underwood back out to punt, looking for a better effort than his first two. And this one away. There we go. Much nice better. high spiral, hanging kick, gets a great bounce, and the coverage team does a great job eluding it, and he flips field position, which is what we've come to expect from young Mr. Underwood. That was a great punt. That was a very good punt. You know, sometimes it, when you when you see really great players all the time, you kind of get, you know, a, a little used to it. I mean, watching Trey's kicks really changes the game a lot of times. Well, and you talk about hidden field position here. They're, I think the refs have blown this one. Are they saying they he touched yes, it? No. And it didn't look, oh. look, didn't look from our angle as, as if he did. So that cost – 10 yards of field position and sets New Hanover up at the 30. 10 26 to go in the first half. Unable to do anything on offense so far. We got Colin Nixon set. from the gun. Oh, Pulls right it. to oh. Look at, whoa. Jaden Marshall almost had a pick there. Wow. And I thought he was throwing the dig route. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> I thought he was throwing the dig route. <laughs> oh. I was getting ready to talk about pick six. <laughs> wow. All right. So now a change in personnel as New Hanover's coaching staff is, you know, they're in the lab. They're pulling everything out. And I say that, but, you know, we talked about this pregame. When we watched on tape, every one of us said, and, and the Lee County coaching staff said as well, they throw everything at you. And here, here we go again with a heavy set. Two wide left. The pitch is to Makai Stanley around that left side. Runs through a tackler, and there's the first really positive play in the running game. 
And Stanley, a big guy, if he gets ahead of steam, look out. He's got the ball across midfield to be spotted out at the 46-yard line. First and 10, New Hanover. And they needed that. Yeah, and they, really the first time you've seen New Hanover kind of switch the formation. They had the tight end in the wing on the right side, moved them late to, across the left, and Lee was just a little late shifting over. That was power toss. Yeah. Right? All that was oh, yeah. a power, power toss. toss. All right, first and 10 at the 46. Wildcats looking to answer the Lee County touchdown. Wow, another formation. Nixon rolls, looks down the field, got a man. Oh, Marshall's man. over behind the defense and has the ball inside the 20. He's the one guy in that passing game that'll run by you, and he does just that. Jackson Lamb and Jaden Chalmers both chasing, and they won't get him until the big, big completion. Marshall there showed post, made a double move, went to the sideline. Chalmers bit on the, on the post dig there. Well and Marshall gets him for 29 yards on the play. So a first and 10 inside the Remax red zone for New Hanover. And Lee County, after two big plays, wants to talk about it. We'll let them do that and take a quick break. You're watching the NFHS Championship Game of the Week. Guys, it's back. Inline skating. Rock and roll hair. Calling this thing a pound sign instead of a hashtag. No, the sensation is back at Zaxby's. The Zensation Salad is back and introducing the new Zensation Filet Sandwich Meal with hand-breaded chicken, Asian slaw, wonton strips, and citrus vinaigrette. Both served with an egg roll. The Zensation Salad and Filet Sandwich Meal, only at Zaxby's. You are watching the NFHS Championship Game of the Week brought to you by Crossroads Ford. So this is interesting. Lee has done this a lot of times this year when the momentum switch happens a little bit against them in the first, particularly the first half when they're on defense. They'll call this timeout and kind of get themselves reset and uh, kind of get their defense realigned a little bit. All right, so two big plays from completely different looks by this new Hanover offense. One a power run, the other a deep throw to the right side. Nixon coming out hoping to keep this drive going. They're missing a player, I believe. Yep, coming out of a timeout, they sure are. That is something you don't want to do. You, you <laughs> don't want to come out of a timeout with a wrong number of players. Well, and the tight end set up there on the left obviously doesn't know what they're running. Motion by the Wildcats. Here comes the pass Real rush. Route. There's another hold. They're going to get Ooh. that one. Flag came out. And flag is in the area of holding here. Well, Prince was held from the beginning there. Well, and and if they didn't get that, they got some sort of motion – or procedure penalty because the, the flag came out really early. Yeah, that's not – that's – what I saw was not where the flag was. I thought Marshall held on the other side to kind of make that wheel action happen. But that was in the back – that was in the defensive backfield. Well, whatever it is, Boy, we're this, taking this, this, this crew is deliberate, if nothing else. All right, here comes the signal. We'll find out with you at home. Oh, and it's a procedure penalty. Interesting. All right, that'll back up the Wildcats five yards, bring up first and 15. I didn't see it, but I'm not saying it wasn't there. Well, it, the only reason I threw that out there is because the flag was so early. Yeah. I didn't catch the flag when it first came out. I don't know quite how the referee missed the hold Ooh. on DDP that was right in front of him, but whatever. Look at this formation. This is something. Quads. This is some street football stuff, some arena football stuff going on. Here's a screen. Got his man, it's Jaheim Marshall wrapped Great up. Great play. Great play in the open field. And Marshall has had a couple of opportunities in space. And thus far, Lee County's held him in check second and 11. Now what you sometimes see out of that formation at some point in the game is a double pass. You'll see that look like it's a screen and they'll release sometimes off the backside. So it might be something to keep an eye on. All right, th three wide right now, two to the left as they go empty. Lee County scrambling around a little bit, but it looks like they have everybody accounted for. Nixon from the gun. Pass rush coming. Oh, that, they got him. Got oh. him. They got him. They got him painfully. This front line of the Yellow Jackets has really done a great job 
of resetting the line of scrimmage and really having their will with this new Hanover Wildcat offensive line right now. All right, no sack on the play, but Duran McCoy got the tackle after a one-yard gain, so third and ten for New Hanover. Now, bear in mind, guys, they're well within field goal range at this point. Owen Daffer, the senior kicker, 11 to 13 on field goals with a long of 50 this year. So he can, he can put a boot in it. But New Hanover hoping to keep this alive. They're chasing touchdowns. Nixon nice, wrapped up. Nice. Desmond, Desmond, right. Desmond with a D1 play. He jumped through the line of scrimmage and split the offensive lineman I like he was in punt block mode. It was a great inside stunt because New Hanover put a wing to Desmond's side trying to keep that edge rush at bay, and he had a nice, what we call slice stunt, right inside the tackle. All right, they're going to attempt a field goal on a on a soft track from 44 yards. This is a long, athletic field goal block team that Lee County trots out there. He's got to get this up quick, and I think New Hanover wants to talk about it. So I don't think they had enough players on the field. This is kind of interesting. This is a pretty senior dominated team late in the playoffs. And this is the second time you've seen a personnel issue. Um, one coming out of that timeout, the other one on a special teams play. All right, 7.56 to go. Lee County up six to nothing. We'll take a quick break, be back to see if New Hanover still plans to attempt this field goal. Are you ready to sell your home and don't know which realtor to choose? Well, not all realtors are the same. I'm Crystal Copas, and I don't just stick a sign in the yard, throw it in the MLS, and hope to collect a commission. I provide a customized marketing plan that includes professional staging, photography, videography, and drone at no cost to you. Contact me, Crystal Copas, with REMAX Real Estate Service, and let's get your house sold. 919-356-5402 or visit me at crystalcopas.com. Welcome back to the NFHS Championship Game of the Week. We're getting ready to watch the Wildcats attempt a 44-yard field goal. All right, Owen Daffer, the senior kicker on. Lee County not really coming after it. Evans lays out for it, and the kick is up, and it is true. That wow. might have been good from 50, and it was right down the middle. That's impressive, guys. That is a good kick by the Wildcats. As Friday night football goes, that's, that's a good kicker. Yeah, a little All bit right. of a high snap there. So, I mean, he uh, he nailed that. So, that is something, you know, when they get 35-yard area, you have to kind of keep an eye on because that's about his strike zone. All right, so 6-3 Lee County. 7.50 Seven. left to go in the half. Y'all are on that. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, Lee County has the one good drive under the belt. Other than that, hadn't done a whole lot of effective on offense. Nate Cochran trying to show me score updates. I can't read them without my glasses, man. I'm, I'm sorry, Chris. That's why my notes here are in oversized crayon. That's why when I print stuff out and give it to you, you don't ever use it. No, <laughs> I, there's no chance. And as and as the lights get dimmer throughout the night, yeah, it's, that's just not going to happen. All right, Lee County set up to return the kick. Tyreek McKendall, number two. And Jaden Chalmers, number one, back deep. Dafford puts a boot in it and, as advertised, kicks it into the end zone. <laughs> there it is. We heard every kick he kicks tonight will be into the end zone. That one, uh, a low liner that conceivably could have been fielded, but McKendall let it go by and into the end zone on the fly and they'll just take over at the 20-yard line. All right, Lee County. A.J. Bullware has been the only tailback to see action tonight, which isn't surprising given that their number two is Larry Baldwin, who's nursing a hamstring injury, and number three is T.J. Johnson, who's playing linebacker in Baldwin's absence. The hand is to Bullware, and he pushes the pile forward for about four. Second down coming up for Lee County. All that there was inside zone by the Yellow Jackets. A.J. Bulware doing a good job finding uh, his B gap there, getting up, getting a four-yard gain. And what I love about that is how he covers the ball with both hands. As soon as he feels pressure, he protects the ball as good as any back we see. 
All right. Lee County, although they don't huddle, running at a, a relatively methodical pace. And there's a pre-snap flag. And these referees are once again. Going to talk officials. about it. Oh, they love to talk. Maybe there was none. No? Yes. Here we go. Did you get the signal, Nate? A legal procedure. Yeah. All right. You didn't. Pat McCracken. Pat did. No, I got it. Uh, Come PA on, announcer here for the Yellow Jackets does a tremendous job. I, I don't know what they're seeing because I'm not seeing movement. I didn't see it there. The receiver right. might not have been on the ball. So now second and 11 for the Jackets. The hand is to Bullware. Bullware to the second oh. level, taken down by a linebacker there, but not before he has positive yardage out to it is only time, gentlemen, yard line. until he breaks that second-level tackle and he is gone. Oh, it is sir. only time. It is coming. All right, ball at the 27-yard line, third and four for the Jackets. They want to keep this drive alive. Fakes to Bullware, throws it to Chalmers. Chalmers wrapped up and spun around, going to be really close to the sticks, but I think it's going to be about a yard. Nah, oh, man, this is tight. He's about a foot short, guys. Now, the way that offensive line is playing, we got a first down signal. <laughs> what were you going to say? <laughs> I, I don't know what I was going to say. I was going to ask you if they were going to go for this uh -huh. or uh, that. Wow, that was a great spot for the Jackets. Great spot for the Jackets. All right, first and 10, Colin Johnson. Hands to Bullware. Bullware into there the secondary. He Here he goes. Can they we catch him? Right. AJ Bullware in a race. Gold. He's going to win that every time. Touchdown, Jackets. Yeah. Woo. We were talking earlier that inside zone, eventually he's going to get past that second level who'd been creeping up. 70 yards on the carry. Bullware breaks one to the house for the best running back in the state of North Carolina. And I think that was James Gordon with an outstanding kickout block on that play. You called it, Nathan, just a matter of time. After the field goal switched up the momentum, Lee County seizes it right back with the big play from the senior tailback, A.J. Bullware. 12-3 lead, 6.06 to go in the first half. And they're running Tyreek McKendall, who's picking his way he into the in. end zone. He's got two. We don't need no stinking PATs. Wow. 14 to three, Yellow Jackets with a lead. That was a play we saw executed perfectly against Cleveland. That was a huge play in the game last week. One of two trick plays in the special teams department for Mr. McKendall, the sophomore making big plays. 14-3, 6.06 to go, and Lee County Getting it done right now, guys. Yeah, Lee doing a really good job chasing the points there. That's the kind of thing you want to do. Make sure, you know, I thought about earlier, we have this nice little grid we use all the time. And uh, the great thing, Lee has all of those bullets in their gun that, you know, they can adapt to situations like that on special teams better than anybody we see. All right, Trey Underwood to kick this thing off. And as always, you have to wonder where this is going to wind up. New Hanover appearing to have more personnel issues, not quite being able to get everyone on the field in one, one movement. Guy, there are 10 players on the field again. Nope, there's 11. There he is. All right. This is curious for a team that, you know, is pretty well coached and has a lot of seniors. Well, I knew looking at the team leaders before we really dug into the research that there were a lot of seniors on this team. But as you pull back the stats, Virtually everyone that contributes on this team is a senior. All right, nice return off the short kick. Has the ball out to the 44-yard line. First and 10, Wildcats. And although they walked out of that last drive with a field goal, they got to be feeling like they're on the ropes right now and need to have something positive happen on offense before the half. Really only two big plays in the game so far for New Hanover. This combo of, of Nixon and Durham, though, don't don't get get lazy on them because they definitely have big play potential here. All right, Nixon from the gun. Lee County showing five with an eight gap blitz. The hand is to the inside. That's not yes, going to work Evans either. With another good play. Jabez Howard not having any more luck than Makai Stanley did earlier. In fact, less as he loses three on the play. 
Second and long coming up for the Jaggets. That was a wide road of wrestling kind of tackle there. Um, stood, stood his ground really strong against the kick block and made an outstanding defensive play. So Desmond Evans obviously has a great highlight tape. Much ballyhooed, one of the top recruits in the country. I've been doing Lee County games since he showed up on campus. This is as big a performance in a meaningful game as I've ever seen from the young man. I've seen him have some great games against bad competition, but in a big time ball game, Des has shown up and shown up in a big way. Second and 12, New Hanover needs to talk about it, maybe take an aspirin. We'll give him a break. Be back after these messages. It happens only once a year. The classic Nissan of Sanford Black Friday sales event is on with Black Friday savings all month long. Shop our huge selection of over 300 new Nissans. Get the area's lowest prices and payments, low financing rates, and more for your trade. Lease the 2019 Nissan Sentra for $199 a month or lease the 2019 Nissan Kicks for $299 a month. Shop the Black Friday sales event going on now at Classic Nissan of Sanford or ClassicNissanSanford.com. Got a text from somebody who's watching. The <laughs> Welcome back to the NFHS Championship Game of the Week. Makai Stanley in a Wildcat formation, second and 12 coming up. They're in that heavy bunch with 74. Stanley up the middle. He's a load. Delivers a hit, but only gets about four on the play. Third and long coming oh, up in a late oh, oh, out. Wow. Put your flags in your pocket. Now, I think they're going to call the flag for celebration here because as late as it came, but uh, the actual contact was at the shoulder level, so it can't be about the contact. Come on, you got to let the guys have fun. Come on now. Wow. Yeah. So instead of third and long, that's going to cost the Jackets 15. Suspect call at best, and the home crowd doesn't like it. And this is going to be a big opportunity for New Hanover. The field position just changed tremendously. All right, all the way down to the 38-yard line. Remind me again who gets the ball second half. Uh, New Hanover does. New Hanover does. So they're definitely going to be wanting to do a piece together a good drive here, put points up, eat some of this clock off, get the ball second half with a chance to take the lead. All right, four wide and an H-back for the senior quarterback, Colin Nixon. Takes the ball, looking short. Now throws it out there. Receiver Jaheim Marshall does a good job of focusing and hanging on to that as he got popped by Jaden Chalmers right on the uh, at the same time. Number one, Jaden Chalmers, another one of these Division I recruits for the Lee County Yellow Jackets. Yeah, Marshall did a good job of almost boxing out Chalmers there um, in order to make that catch. All right, first and ten, four and a half to go in the half. Kai Stanley getting instructions. Now set as the lone tailback. Three wide receivers. One comes in motion. Nixon fakes, rolls to his right, leads his receiver out there. Great, 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 tackle. Tackle. great tackle in the open field. And that's TJ Johnson, who's in there as a sub. We talked about early, really coming up and making a nice play this on Aiden Brady. This zebra nice crew play. really getting on. The linebacker for Lee County right then for a celebration. Didn't throw the flag, but this crew is wanting to keep this a very tight, unemotional game for the state semifinals. And what do you guys think about that? If you can't tell the discontent in my voice, I don't <laughs> need to explain it to you. All right, clock ticking inside 350. Second and seven. Two backs in the backfield with Nixon. Nixon rolls to his left. Looking, has a man wide open. And Aiden Brady wrapped up and forced out of bounds, but inside the 10-yard line, first and goal for New Hanover. And that's just a blown coverage, guy. Nobody accounted for number 11, Aiden Brady, on the play. Well, and Brady ran like a little short motion kind of towards about the, the slot point. Coach um, Bordeaux wanting Brady to call a timeout here, not getting it. Coach Bordeaux wanting to get a timeout here. There it huh. is. Well, they're too busy looking for celebrations. Oh, uh, there. All right, so Coach Bordeaux wants to talk to his defense. New Hanover has the ball at the eight-yard line first and goal. We'll take a quick break. Be back right after these messages. You're watching the NFHS Game of the Week. 
Being good at what you do takes commitment. At Sanford Contractors, we've been committed for 50 years, committed to high-quality construction services and trusted partner relationships. We started in 1969 and through smart and consistent growth, now offer our partners more services than ever before in bridge construction, commercial building, site development, and utility construction. Sanford Contractors, building with trust for 50 years. Learn more at SanfordContractors.com. You are watching the NFHS Championship Game of the Week, brought to you by Crossroads Ford. Big city deals with a small town feel. All right, first and goal from about the seven-yard line. Colin Nixon under center. Got a big backfield there. Bancroft in at fullback, leading away from Makai Stanley, but that's not gonna oh. do any good. Desmond Evans says, I'll see your big backfield and raise you a number one recruit in the state. And so you're not blocking him on that play. That's power eye to the right side of the Lee County defense. Evans just came from backside all the way across and made a great play from behind. All right, second and goal for New Hanover. Just about three minutes left in the first half. And as Coach Cochran said just a couple moments ago, New Hanover will get the ball to start. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Play blown up. Nixon keeps it alive. Evans in press. Oh, oh, almost a pick. And Nixon gets away with one there. A sincere sincere Golston had a shot at it. <laughs> oh, boy. A play of almost enormous impacts by two different Lee County players. That would have been huge to get the touch back and the ball back. But once again, great penetration by the Lee County defensive line. If you watch this new Hanover, they are throwing all sorts of stuff with, on their their quarterback, Nixon, just trying to get him a little bit of time to get rid of that ball. Big stand here. All right, third and goal. Heavy, heavy set in here. The hand is inside. Yeah. Desmond Again. Evans Desmond. no sir. Evans coming from the backside defensive end spot. Almost a replay of the first down play. Big. Another concern about celebration. I, I, this is this is really out of control. That is a pretty tame celebration coming off a play of that impact. And this 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 crew not impressing me a whole lot right now, to be frank. And you would expect with this being a state semifinal, there are what eight games happening in the state right now. Get your best crews out there. Owen Daffer for the field goal. Hold us down, Oof. Evans almost got there, doesn't quite get it. And New Hanover puts another field goal on the board, but right now they're trading field goals for touchdowns and Lee County's up 14-6. Lee County will get this thing back with 2.06 to go in the half. We'll take a quick break and be back with the kickoff. You're watching the NFHS Game of the Week. Are you ready to sell your home and don't know which realtor to choose? Well, not all realtors are the same. I'm Crystal Copas, and I don't just stick a sign in the yard, throw it in the MLS, and hope to collect a commission. I provide a customized marketing plan that includes professional staging, photography, videography, and drone at no cost to you. Contact me, Crystal Copas, with REMAX Real Estate Service, and let's get your house sold. 919-356-5402 or visit me at crystalcopas.com. Welcome back to the NFHS Championship Game of the Week brought to you by Crossroads Ford to Sanford. All right, Owen Daffer, the senior kicker to kick this thing off. Lee County going to have about two minutes to do some work and add to this 14-6 lead. This is the North Carolina East 3A semifinal. Well, it's the Eastern final. So it's the state semifinal. Correct. Help me with my vernacular. You are, you are most correct. You are correct. So one way or the other, there's one game away. This is the Eastern bracket final. There you go. There you go. Which is the state championship semifinal. Any update on the uh, Weddington Watauga game? Chris, when we first started this, didn't you tell me don't ask questions? You that if I'm not 100% sure you have the answer for? I did. I've said that to you many times. <laughs> We're running out of games for me to get payback on you, buddy. <laughs> All right, 2.06 to go. Senior quarterback, Colin Johnson, looking for a big play. Quick screen. And TJ or Tyreek McKendall 
dragged down, maybe got a yard on the play. Yeah, Lee running that tunnel screen again. Um, you know, what it does do, even if they're not getting yards, it makes New Hanover have to cover the entire field, and it opens up those run lanes in between the tackles. All right, no safety in the middle of the field. Handoff is to Bullware, and that's the best job New Hanover's done tonight, stacking him up for nothing. Clock inside a minute and a half to go in the second quarter. In the three minutes to go in the second quarter, Weddington versus Watauga. Weddington is up 35 to nothing. Well. In the what quarter? In the second quarter. Weddington, the defending three AA state champs, playing like it right now. All right. Johnson from the gun barking signals. Almost got a man to jump. Everybody checking wristbands. Fakes the hand, now gets it out to Chalmers. Chalmers looking to get into space. And good job by the defense there. Lee County looking for a late hit out of bounds, not going to get it. And that'll work against him in several ways. Not going to get the first down, leaving four yards short, and it stops the clock with 55 seconds to go in the half. New Hanover is going to get yet another bite at this apple, guys. Yeah, not, you know, not to belabor the point, but it certainly seems like New Hanover's celebrations are not causing the same concern as Lee County's. And over by the same side, Judge, that's kind of bothersome. All right, Trey Underwood on to punt this away. Play clock down at five. And the snap is there. New Hanover with good pressure, but can't get there. Kick bounces sideways at about the 42-yard line, goes out of bounds. New Hanover will take over their first and 10 with 48 seconds to go in the quarter. And yeah, it is troublesome. It's just kind of a different, it's a different kind of crew. I mean, I'm around officials all the time, and it's just kind of a unique kind of approach. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see here to see, does New Hanover take a shot? considering they get the ball coming out of the half, or do they play a little bit more conservative here? Well, I tell you, Rob, I'm not an offensive coordinator or head coach anywhere, but if I was, and I had a player as explosive as number three, Jaheim Marshall, I'd take a shot. I'd try to get the ball into his hands, and not even necessarily trying to get a shot over the top. I might try that once, but you know, you've got some pretty conservative ways to get the ball into his hands and get him into space. That seems like a nice idea. Instead, they're gonna run him deep, and he's got his man beat. And Nixon doesn't Big connect. Hit. But well, I'm gonna number tell you 54. what, he left Jaden Chalmers flat footed with that second half of that double move. And Marshall was running free. And Nixon couldn't connect, and that's one that's gonna cost him some sleep at night. Yeah, and Lee County went to a too high safety look, um, almost their version of a little bit of a prevent defense, but uh, just the speed of New Hanover kind of great pressure. And follow through by number 54, Deron McCoy there for the Yellow Jackets. Really getting in Nixon's face. Give him a good lick. All right. Third and 10, 41 to go. Interesting look I don't, here. I didn't think you could move two guys at one time. All right. Nixon drops. Throws it quick over the middle. Doesn't have a man. Now, guys, with 36 seconds to go, now his strategy comes into play. Lee Clowney's got one timeout left in their pocket. If this clock doesn't stop after this play and it's short of a first down, do you burn that and try and get the offense back out on the field, or do you hold what you got and go into the into the big house? I think you burn it and try to block the punt. As good as Lee County blocks punts, I would take advantage of this opportunity. All right, third and ten. They've got to get to a punt first. Nixon in there. Makai Stanley, interestingly enough, is not in the ball game. It's Raz Chandler in the backfield as the tailback. And he'll take the pitch going to the left. Got a little bit of space, cuts it back upside, and will have the first down. Nice bit of burst there, and it's good for 14 by Raz Chandler. That's a great football name. <laughs> I think it's the second time New Hanover switched the formation late, moved the tight end in the wing to the opposite side of the formation, and ran that kind of power sweep from it. All right, clock running with 25 seconds to go. Nixon taking a little bit of time here. Takes the snap. Looks, has it high outside to Jaheim Marshall for about five and stops the clock with 14 to go. And again, we have to invoke that field goal kicker. Right now at the 46-yard line, they're getting close, or excuse me, the 36-yard line. At the end of the half, they might actually attempt one from here. A couple more yards and they 
probably feel good about their chances. Uh, do you have an Alabama-Auburn situation if you're Lee County? You put uh, Tyreek McCoy back there to try to field it? No, but if it's a long one, I think you sell out on the block attempt. Oh, oh hook and lateral. Hook and lateral. What a play. That was cute. And he tackled him. Hey, the, the clock's running. All right, six seconds left. New Hanover's going to get a timeout. you got to think they're going to bring the field goal crew out here. This will be their last timeout. Great so timeout, play. New Hanover. Yeah, you don't ever Great see that play by in the Lee flow County of a game. Not to give that one up. You don't see the hook and lateral during the course of a game. That's an end of game type thing people pull out. But uh, nicely executed, but nicely covered. And we're going to get – they're setting up and they're going to take a crack at this 45-yard field goal. Lee County, you know, you only get so many chances for splash plays. I think I'd put 11 men on the line of scrimmage and come after this instead of the safe look they do on field goal attempts. Coach Purdue doesn't agree with me. He's got three DBs in there and eight on the line of scrimmage. Look out for number 10 at the bottom of your screen coming around that corner. He's been close to kicks all night and hadn't gotten one. Here's the snap. Oh, the line not Looks quite able to get there. And it is good. Wow. And Owen Daffer. What a boot. Has got all the points for New Hanover tonight as they pull this thing to 14-9 at the first half gun. We'll take a break and be back on the other side to talk about what we've seen. 90 years ago, First Bank was founded. You know First Bank, the one where you are greeted by name, the one dedicated to the community, and the one born in the heart of the Carolinas. We help our customers to realize their dreams by providing financial solutions and building trusted relationships. Hi, I'm David Fashi, and we are First Bank. Welcome to the Classic Nissan Halftime Report. All right, welcome back to the NFHS Championship Game of the Week. This is the Halftime Show. Who's our halftime sponsor, Mr. Cochran? Ooh. <laughs> oh, you I caught, caught you me. without notes. You, you caught me sleeping oh, on that one. Goodness. Classic Nissan. All right, is the thanks to Classic sponsor. Nissan. You guys actually sat in on the coaches' show over at Classic Nissan in my stead this week, and I heard it went tremendously so thank you and good Absolutely. job oh, nathan was he was outstanding uh i just sat there and listened to a good show wow y'all okay. are way too nice <laughs> you should have heard what my wife said she was oh, like, you're terrible i don't even i don't even ask you bang on the uh, table oh uh, she told me i was awful you can't even can't even ask anymore you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna get any love there we've been married too long all right 14 to 9 at the end of one half of football feels like lee county should have stretched this lead out a little bit more lee county fans will be hoping that doesn't come back to bite them but New Hanover can't continue to sort of keep clinging on this way. They've got to get something moving on offense. What do you see as some options for them, Coach Patterson? Well, you almost feel like you've seen all their formations already. Yep. You know, they're having a really hard time establishing any kind of running game. Um, they have gotten some stuff, you know, intermittently through the air, but they're really trying to move their quarterback around, trying to avoid that Lee County pressure and having so-so success doing that. So. It's really going to be hard to tell. I think you're, you might see them go through the air a little bit more where they've had some success, but they've had no luck in the ground. Well, and, you know, if you're Lee County, you have to have figured out at some point, figure out where number three is out on the field. Yeah. Very explosive. Jaheim Marshall for New Hanover, the senior wide receiver. He is their game breaker. Everybody on the field knows it, and Lee County's got to account for him. He got loose a couple of times, gashed him once for 27 yards, probably should have had a touchdown catch for about 50 on another. Um New Hanover certainly is going to try to keep pumping him the ball. Lee County is going to have to do a little bit better job of keeping him in check. One thing I've seen, Chris, is last week against Cleveland, we saw a really good battle up front with Cleveland and Lee County's offensive defensive line. Tonight, even with the 340-pound um, gentleman from New Hanover, we're really seeing Lee County displace the line of scrimmage on both offense and defense. This, this play by both lines tonight – is the best game I've seen so far across the board for their offensive and defensive and line. And to be fair and give credit where credit is due, there have been times over the course of this year in particular where we've been a little bit critical of what we've seen in terms of, of effort level from Desmond Evans. Yep. Evans having 
lights out. Oh, as good a game as you could hope for from a defensive lineman. This is an ACC player game. They, they've, <laughs> they've got no answer for him on that offensive line. New Hanover going to have to account for him, whether they're running away from him, doubling him. I don't know what they're going to do, but say, something's got to give. Um, he just continues to make big play after big play. On offense for Lee County, I think you're going to see a lot of the same that we saw earlier yep. until New Hanover shows they can stop it. And if they keep getting one-on-one -on -one with A.J. Bulware in the secondary, he's going to have a couple more of those 70-yard touchdown runs. So Lee County only up five at the intermission, but looking really good doing it. They've got to kick it away to New Hanover, so New Hanover gets the first bite at the apple here in the second half. We'll be back with that and the whole rest of this ball game. You're watching the state semifinals for the 3A Lee County hosting the New Hanover Wildcats. We're ready for the second half. Hope you are too. It's game day at Classic Nissan. The starting lineup. Your captains on offense, number five, Holden Cruz. And number 10, Jasmine Dole. Your captains on defense, number 55, Wesley Tater Womack. Number seven, Steve Dandrit. Whether you're a Yellow Jacket or a Cavalier, everybody gets a classic deal. For sales, service, or parts, visit us at ClassicNissanSanford.com or in person on Highway 87, right across from Walmart in Sanford. Every now and again, you have to be, you have to ask for forgiveness. Yeah. Please forgive us. We got it wrong. Lee County gets the ball to start the second half. And Daffer kicks it out of the end zone. And it'll be a touchback. And that's about the most boring play in the high school sports that you don't ever get to see because you don't see too many of these kids that can kick it out of the back of the end zone. But Daffer doing it with regularity. You know, Chris, at times I talk about how we need to get rid of kickoffs. Just let them start on the 25 and move on. Watching this Lee County special teams unit, you know, New Hanover, it wouldn't affect anything. Yeah. But Lee County really makes that such a critical part of their game. You know, they convinced me to, to keep it every week. All right, very good. All right, Colin Johnson from the gun. Four wideouts, A.J. Bullware in the backfield. Bullware gets the hand, picking his way, trying to push the pile, gets about a yard. So if you're watching, keep an eye as Lee County gets in that doubles formation. The outside backers of New Hanover are widening out. It's almost creating a five-man box inside. And at some point, Lee's going to be able to pop that first level and uh, take Bulwer to the house on that. Well, with everybody, you know, you're running an, an eight, almost nine-man box at some points, like you just said. Aren't you tempted to try to use some sort of motion, just get somebody down the seam with no safety in the middle of the field? All right, Johnson gets it out to Lett. Lett's going to have about five on the play. Third down coming up for the Jackets. Uh, yeah, you are. But, you know, Lee will run some, some motion out of their double stack alignment, but they're not a heavy motion team. You know, they have done a really good job of staying true to their core offense and being very efficient in what they run. Third and five. Colin Johnson, senior quarterback from the gun, takes the snap, gets it out quick, has a man contact early, no flag. He was looking for Tyreek McKendall and will not connect, and that brings out the punt team. So New Hanover didn't get the opening kick, but they'll get it just that quickly with 11:14 to go in the third quarter. 46 seconds burned off the clock there. Not much of a not much of a showing from the Lee County offense there. A little surprised they didn't just come out and run heavy and run that ball. All right, Underwood to punt. Much better punt by Trey. Underwood. High hanger, fair catch made at the 46-yard line. That's Aiden Brady that was back to return the punt. So here go the Wildcats. You know, I remember George Allen used to say the most important possessions in any football game were the first two coming out of halftime. So we will see if New Hanover can uh, change up what they've been doing here. Is it true that George Allen died of pneumonia after coaching a game? Didn't he get doused with Gatorade or water or something and died of pneumonia? I didn't know that. I think so. Guys, right, Makai Stanley, I could have that completely wrong. And, and Picks up a couple. Me. Who's George Allen? Oh, here we go with the millennials. Oh, Lord <laughs> also, it's Trot Dixon. Don't know who he is either. 
Do you really not know who Trot Nixon is? No, nah, I don't know. Okay. I don't know who that is. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll church you up after. Trot Nixon, great baseball player, great in the history of, of North Carolina State baseball, but also is a quite an accomplished major leaguer. Did most of his damage with the Red Sox, if I'm not mistaken. I got that. I have it right, Patterson. That is correct. All right. His son, Colin, moving everybody around. Three men in motion. Everybody comes back set. Watch for the pitch. Nixon pitches left. There's your toss. And Lee County knew it was coming. Going nowhere. So one of the really underrated things, I think, about the Lee County coaching staff is how well they make adjustments at halftime. You made a point there, you know, they played better in the second half. That is a big reason. On the two, two plays they ran that in the first half, they got really positive yardage. You can see real evidence of Lee County making the necessary adjustments um, to take that kind of stuff. Well, and, and Rob, the thing with it is, is it's easy for a coach like you to stand here in the booth and be able to pick it out on screen. But to be able in 15 minutes in the locker room to get that and relay it and get your players to execute that modified behavior that quickly is really, really impressive. And we see it time and again, like you said, from the Lee County staff. And Jaheim Marshall with another catch and a first down for the Wildcats. You know, they've had success motioning almost to a stack alignment and then running what we might call split routes out of that. So. Um, the once, deep, deep out route was all that was. Yeah. But once again, you know, they're putting their quarterback, they're putting Nixon in that sprint mode, trying to keep him away from the pressure. Well, and Jaden Chalmers, number one for Lee County, is traveling with Jaheim Marshall at this point. He's dragging him all over the field. And really, it's just up to him to do a better job. Oh, oh bad, bad snap. snap. And that's a huge chunk lost. They're going to lose 17 on the play as Makai Stanley gets back there to fall on it. Ooh. Huge play. Ooh. Not good for the New Hanover Wildcats. Wow, and you almost saw Nixon kind of look and see, well, asked his running back team, hey, are you going to get it or do I need to? Pulling a little bit of Cam Newton right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and if you're one of these Lee County defensive linemen, you're chomping at the bit right now. Second and a mile. So be looking for a screen of some type here. I was just about to say, look for tunnel here. Get it in. Uh, New Hanover doesn't like the look. They're going to burn a timeout early, and this might come to this might be important later on down the road. 9:05 left to go in the third quarter. New Hanover wants to talk about it. We'll give them a chance to and take a quick break. You're watching the NFHS Championship Game of the Week. Try the new Southwest Chipotle Filet Sandwich with pickled jalapenos, pepper jack cheese, and chipotle aioli. Or the Smokehouse Cheddar Barbecue Filet Sandwich with smoky bacon and onion rings on Texas toast. Two brand new sandwich meals, only at Zaxby's. See Jumanji the next level only in theaters. Welcome back to the NFHS Championship Game of the Week, brought to you by Crossroads for to Sanford. 9.05 to go in the third quarter. Lee County trying to find their way to their first State championship game in a very, very long time. New Hanover, old pros at this, just put a state championship trophy into their cabinet two years ago. They had 2017 three double-A champs. Knocked out in the second round by Dudley last year, the same team that beat Lee County in the opening round. Um, second and 26 coming. Nixon drops, going down oh, the field, has Marshall man. and overthrows him. Again on the same type route, and he had Chalmers beat again. Again. That double move, and Chalmers knows it when it's happening. You can see him kind of grab for the towel. Marshall's awful quick. Marshall's really wearing out the UNC commit right now. Well, and, you know, New Hanover showing a little bit of motion across. Um, it kind of got the Lee County defender's eyes mo moving left to right a little bit. Caused a little bit of hesitation by the defensive backs, which created that nice seam inside. Well, if three's the guy and the only guy they're going to go to down the field, why are they not rolling a safety over top of him? That is a good point. Though Lee, Lee likes to stay in what they're in. They're, All right, they're here pretty we go. efficient in that. Nixon looking for Marshall on a double move again. Hangs it out there. Has him in a great play. play by the safety. Sincere Goldston at the last possible instant. And to Gets your his point. fingers on it. Probably a good idea to roll that safety Probably over the top. Yeah. <laughs> to your point, good safety help. Um. Chalmers couldn't do anything but chase, but Goldston took a great angle and got over there. Got a hand on it just in just time. Just fingers. Now, fourth and 26 here. If you're ever going to sell out to block a punt, 
This would be a great time to do it. Oh, yeah. Tyreek McKendall deep for the Jackets. Line is in their sprinter stance. Here they come. Oh, can't quite get there. Short kick. Takes a sideways bounce and a roll dead at about the 27-yard line. First and 10 Jackets. 8.40 to go in the third quarter. Lee County happened to be in front, but they'd like to put a little bit of distance between these two teams. I'm, th I, I'm gonna be shocked if this isn't three straight runs. Lee County trying to come back from a, a not amazing three and out on their first possession here. I would expect a heavy dose of bull wear. You're well, right. And you, had, you, you, know, you had a pair of incompletions sandwiched around a run up the middle that was actually effective. All right, here comes Bullware. Ooh, pushes the pile. He's got about three on the play, second down coming. Uh, New Hanover defender took a huge hit on that run. Um, landed flat on his back. The North Carolina High School Association marketing communication director just strolled right through the middle of our broadcast. Mr. Alverson James there. Alverson. Okay. That's right. Royalty. With his presence. Oh, no. All right, Bowware. Oof. Stutter Whoa. steps. Going to be close to a first down. Third and short coming up. Eight minutes to go in the third. I mean, does it feel like with just one breath away from That's a big right. run? I was talking to Mr. James Alver Alverson's father, Jeff, who I'm a friend, who friends with, and we have the Eastern Finals trophies down there. Um, he is there to present them after the end of the ball game tonight. All right, injury on the field. There's a yellow jacket down. I'm trying number? to see, is it Cullen McDonough? Can't tell from here, so I'm not going to speculate. Looks like 60. Cullen McDonough, the offensive lineman. And Pierce are looking at his right leg. Colin McDonough, all right. So as they tend to the injury, we'll take a quick break. 7.54 to go in the third quarter. Lee County Yellow Jackets up 14-9. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Being good at what you do takes commitment. At Sanford Contractors, we've been committed for 50 years, committed to high-quality construction services and trusted partner relationships. We started in 1969 and through smart and consistent growth, now offer our partners more services than ever before in bridge construction, commercial building, site development, and utility construction. Sanford Contractors, building with trust for 50 years. Learn more at SanfordContractors.com. All right, McDonough coming off under his own power. Gets a roar from the crowd. And that is really good to see. All right, third and short coming. And this is as loud as we've heard this crowd tonight, guys. It's that time, getting deep into the ball game. Nathan, do you hard count this? Absolutely, you hard count it. I love the hard count in a big, high tempo situation. All right, Johnson takes a snap, gives the bullware great play. Bullware going nowhere. Great play. Number 53, the leader of this defense in terms of tackles. One of them, Patrick Faircloth, the sophomore in, and wraps bullware up. And just like that, the punt team's back out. That was a big stop for New Hanover. Guys, one thing to keep an eye on, we're starting to see a lot of chippiness coming out from both sides, New Hanover and Lee County. New Hanover had a player escorted off the field by a coach there after that stop. Underwood to punt. Oh. Almost blocked. It oh, has to be a foul. Back. There we go. There the it goes. There it is. It'll be yellow and jacket And that's going to be, it was fourth and three. Really slow on the draw was the official. He had to find it. But even if it's five yards, this is going to be a Lee County first down. 7.15 to go in the ball game. Huge turn of events here. I don't know how Underwood got the punt off. That was I, an outstanding effort. Great job by senior kicker Trey Underwood. And how many times this year, Nate, have you and I seen a, t a kicker take a dive? That was a one. No. Uh, <laughs> no, they came right up the gut and they got him. And, and like you yeah. said, Coach, I don't know how he got it off. We, we talked about last week talking about how you – some of us up here have coach kickers to take a dive on that. If it looks close, take a dive. Well, I tell you, there was no no looking close. New Hanover ran smack dab into Trey Underwood. All right, five yards for Lee County. Never bigger. 
7.15 to go. They're going to keep this ball, get it out toward midfield. Ball's at the 43, 44-yard line. They go four wide. Colin Johnson, the quarterback. A.J. Bullware been in the backfield as best I can tell every single snap this game. I tell you, with the, uh, with the middle of that field as open as it is, just hand it to Bullware. Eventually, he's going to get another one. Oh, my gosh. Bad Ooh. decision. First bad decision we've seen from Colin Johnson tonight. He threw that late. And his receiver stopped moving. The defense hadn't and almost picked it off. Second and ten. Got to do better than that. Bad combination for a quarterback is when you are reeling backwards and you throw that ball late and off your back foot, you're not getting the velocity on the ball that you like to have. Got away with one on that on that turn. Guys, you, you said this 3-4. This 3-4 has really turned into more of a 5-2. There just isn't anything in the middle. If they can get through that the, the middle, Bullware dives forward. It's going to have six, third and four coming up. I'd be oh – man. Really good effort by Bullware. It is a big difference if third and four versus third and eight. And that was just all effort by him. Third and four really opens up your playbook to where you can throw, you can run, you can do a lot of different options. Third and eight is pretty much the defense knows we're pinning our ears and we're coming after it. Lee County taking their time here. Still 15 on the play clock. Chalmers has a post here. The hand is to Bullware. No fakes. Pulls it. Has Tim Lent. That's going to be a first down as he's out. Just a foot or two past the sticks at midfield. And that's a Lee County first down. And thank goodness what you do see by the Lee Whoa! County. Whoa! That's a terrible spot. Oh, my goodness. That is awful. No, 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 that no, is no. terrible. No. Oh, oh wow. my Coach goodness. Coach Perdue is incredulous. He should be fired on the spot. That's two yards short. That is not even close. And now they're gonna they're gonna conference. I think the far side official has got to recognize that's an awful. That is not even close. To, awful he caught that spot ball on the fifty. Yes, he got a dead on the fifty. Guys, yard line. I don't know. They've got the ball spotted at the forty-eight. I don't know if he ever got pushed back to the forty-eight. No, no, not even close. Well, you know, I was getting ready to say what a great job the Lee County receivers do of getting past the sticks on those third down plays, and he was past. And the he sticks. did. And you've got and he did. six men on this crew. And they're going to stand with it. That's atrocious. There are seven games going on in the state of North Carolina tonight. You Say it again, mate. Say are it again. seven games going on in the state of North Carolina. That crew's got to do better than that. That is terrible. So that ball was caught a yard beyond. Now they're going to bring the chains out to measure after they've – Well, the measurement's after not going to matter. I mean, torn this spot up by a full two yards. This is – of Amazing. course it's short. <laughs> it's two yards behind wow. where the receiver caught the ball was tackled backwards. All right, the Lee County offense come back out on the field. This home crowd knows their football, and it doesn't even take a real knowledgeable to crew no. to see no. how bad that one no. was. No. That, that was awful. That's just pitiful. I tell now, you Lee County has to come back from this. They what can't now? let this, this stop them. All right, they only need about a foot and a half here. Offense still on the field now. And we saw him last week run some short yarded stuff out of the Wildcat. Uh, they're looking for a hard count here. Be interested to see if they actually run a play. 17 to go on the play clock. Signals coming in. Play clock down to 10. B Bulwer switches sides. There's the snap. Hand us Bulwer. Oh, he's, got he's got it. 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 52 yards for A.J. Bulwer. Touchdown, Jackets. How many times do you see on a short yardage play a running back break the first level and take it to the house? Never. Wow. When that. you're not playing, when you're playing with essentially one linebacker, all you need is a seam. Yeah. That's what Bullware got, and you're just not going to catch him in the open field. Now it's 20 to 9. Underwood on to add the extra point and stretch this out to a two touchdown game. And at that point, you got to like Lee County's choice, uh, chances. Kick is up by Underwood. It is up and it is good. No! no. Good. 21 9. They say it was wide left. All right. Kickers, Chris, are a funny batch of football players. When they start going bad, they go real bad to real fun. All right, 558 to go. 20 to 9. Lee County. We'll be back with the kickoff after these messages. 
It happens only once a year. The classic Nissan of Sanford Black Friday sales event is on. With Black Friday savings all month long, shop our huge selection of over 300 new Nissans. Get the area's lowest prices and payments, low financing rates, and more for your trade. Lease the 2019 Nissan Sentra for $199 a month or lease the 2019 Nissan Kicks for $299 a month. Shop the Black Friday sales event going on now at Classic Nissan of Sanford or ClassicNissanSanford.com. Welcome back to Paul B. Gay Stadium. You are watching the NFHS Championship Game of the Week brought to you by Crossroads Ford of Sanford. Big city deals with a small town feel. Gentlemen, we talked all night about how good a front running team Lee County is and has been. A big play like that on offense in the second half. We've seen this half a dozen, oh, half a dozen, 20 times this year, Nate. You know there's a big play coming from the defense right now, right? I sure hope so. <laughs> I sure hope so. All right, Underwood. See what kind of kick he's going to produce here. And it is a long one over top of the Aiden Brady, the return Ooh. man, and Whoa, into the end Trey zone. Underwood puts Brady. It back there. Wow. And, and that ball had a chance of just dying on the it one did. yard Brady line. It was, did. Brady was almost got caught looking at it. Yeah. But instead, it'll be a touchback ball. It's come out to the 20-yard line for the new Hanover Wildcats. They're running out, of, running out of bites at the apple here. I think I've used the bites of the apple a couple too many times, but it's working. And, guys, Underwood's still limping when he comes off the field. There is something going on there. So, um, he's toughing it out really well for them right now. All right, here we go. Colin Nixon, senior quarterback, trying to keep his season and his high school career alive. Man in motion. Fakes. Oh, now nice. looking for Marshall over the nice. middle. Oh, forced it in there into double coverage. Lee County's figured out that's where the ball's going. Jordan Batts gets a hand on it. And that was a prime time play by Batts. He saw that slant come and turn oh, and yeah. sat on it. It was he outstanding. You know, Jordan Batts is the type player, I think, that defines Steve Berdu's success here at Lee County. A program player, wasn't expected to do a whole lot, and over the last couple of years since Berdu has gotten here, really turned him into a big-time contributor. Hey, what you are seeing is Lee in more of a too-high safety shell now. All right, you say too-high safety, but you've got man coverage down here with Chalmers and J Jaheim Marshall. There goes Nixon for the first time calling his own number. Carrying that ball like a loaf of bread, he'll pick up about 15, call it 18. And has a first down for the Wildcats. Looks like it's going to be first and 10 from the 37 for the Wildcats. You know, we talked earlier about, you know, the turnover game being important in here. This would be a really good time for Lee County to force a turnover. All right. You would have to think a turnover plus six would, would put this game almost out of reach. Yeah, I think that would do it. Ball 37, first and 10 motion. Up, oh, and there's a oh, there's false no way start. False, false start. start. There I was going to say. Uh, the center, center missed the snap count there. Everybody else on the line moved. <laughs> so, Chris, if the officials had missed that one, we would have had Nathan <laughs> we, missing. Nate might have just <laughs> gone down the stairs. We, we might have had to finish by ourselves. Oh. All right. But first once and again, 15 coming. Guys, they'll do that little shift, and then they're showing toss sweep when they do it. Um, Lee had really good pursuit on that one. I think without the penalty, it was still a five-yard loss. Big call there, five-yard loss. Yeah. All right, first and 15. Clock at 5.41 to go in the third. Nixon drops. No pressure, clean pocket. Gets it out to Marshall. Marshall hitting the back by Chalmers after an eight-yard reception. Second down coming up. I'll tell you what. New Hanover, Max protecting on that play. Only sent two receivers in the route. Really concerned about protecting uh, Mr. Nixon right now. Well, Marshall took a hard shot from Chalmers in the lower back at the end of that, and he got up a little slow. Not quite as spry as he's been tonight. Clock down around five minutes to go in the third quarter. With the eight of the penalty, still looking at a second and long for New Hanover here. We're seeing that two receivers set with a tight end and a wing. All right, Nixon drops. Here comes pressure. Nope, screens back against it. Going nowhere. Great play by the Yellow Jacket defense. Devin Pelham on the reception gets nothing. Might lose a yard or two. 
Number 50, DeAndre Dingle Prince on the tackle. Read that the entire way, sat right at the running back. D, D, P. And that's nothing but good defense following your keys. They've been in that formation a lot. Tight end has shown no inclination to be in the pass route. They sat on that screen, followed their reads, and made a great play on second down. Four and a half to go, 29, 20 to nine is the score, third and nine here. Lee County needs to get set. They got a receiver unaccounted for right now. Yeah, they do, and it's out there to him. It's high, wrapped up, and is gonna be oh. short. Got to do a better job than that over there. As between Golston and Jaden Chalmers, they left somebody unaccounted for. It's going to bring up fourth and two. Four down territory here for New Hanover. Since here, Golston was a little late going over to cover there. Looks like New Hanover brought in their heavy set. I see big number 74 on that line, so we expect a heavy dive here. Well, they brought that heavy set out in short yardage every time they've had it this game. It's only worked once. And that was on a toss. But Nixon is still at quarterback now. All right. Nixon under center, That's trying to get the hard count. count. Time's going to run Tries out. Tries again. And they they're going to burn time another out. timeout. Wow. That's two gone that is for one New Hanover in a close ball night. game. One to go. They want to talk about it. We'll give them a chance to take a quick break. You're watching the NFHS Game of the Week. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Try the new Southwest Chipotle Filet Sandwich with pickled jalapenos, pepper jack cheese, and chipotle aioli. Or the Smokehouse Cheddar Barbecue Filet Sandwich with smoky bacon and onion rings on Texas toast. Two brand new sandwich meals, only at Zaxby's. See Jumanji the next level only in theaters. HS Game of the Week brought to you by Crossroads 4 to Sanford. I'll tell you what, gentlemen, you got to kind of wonder about the, the strategy from New Hanover on that play, burning a second half timeout. Um, trying to draw Lee County offsides on fourth and short. So this may come back to bite them if this game gets close late. All right. In the third quarter, you really don't want to burn two timeouts. No. I mean, that's really not amazing game management. Three and a half minutes left in the third quarter. New Hanover rolling the dice here, fourth and one. Nixon and the Wildcats. Three back set. Back to just camped out in the middle of the line there. I don't know what he's doing. White right. Hat can't figure out there where he's, he's supposed to go. There we go. All right, Nixon from under center. Takes a snap, hands. Got he's his got first down. Got that first down, Jabez, Jabez Howard. Junior tailback. Plows through, gets a couple, needed one, got about two. So right at midfield, New Hanover keeps the drive alive. The longer this drive goes though, Chris and Rob, the more time. New Hanover not in time of urgency yet, right. but this clock keeps right on ticking. Howard with the carry again. He seems to have taken over the duties at the tailback. He picks up three. Clock inside of three minutes to go. New Hanover needs Couple of scores here. Down 11. Do the math. They can score a touchdown, go for two, and add a field goal, which they've been particularly good at. Well, New Hanover's shown really strong patience here. As you know, we're getting towards the end of the third quarter. They're still showing kind of their power run lineup. Not in a great hurry. All right, Wildcat now. Makai Stanley in at quarterback. He'll keep it himself right up the middle and gets nothing as he's gotten most of the night. Two and a half to go, third down coming up. You have to wonder why New Hanover keeps going to that with Makai Allen. There Stanley. Makai Stanley, my apologies. Their quarterback, it has not been successful throughout the evening. Makes you wonder why on a second and seven you pull that back out. Nate, I don't have an answer for you. <laughs> well, I will tell you, I think they are really concerned about their ability to protect their quarterback. And I think this is their way to try to, you know, create positive plays on offense without throwing the football. Well, the other thing, guys, too, is I'm, I'm not sure. They don't want to get into a track meet with Lee County. I think they figured out at this point they got a couple of game breakers on that offense they don't want to see too many times and, and have to trade scores. Oh, I tell you what, tough break there. That was actually a nice play design. Devin Pelham got the thing, corralled it, and then kind of lost, lost his – yeah, lost wherewithal. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he lost track of where he was on the football field 
and apparently I've lost track of where he was too and <laughs> gave up ground and that never went anywhere. So fourth and long coming up. Um, at midfield, you any, any surprise guys that the punt team's out there? No, not at fourth and 11. No. All right, fourth and 11 here. Although minute, minute plus to go. Lee County in a, in a safe look. And the punt is away. It's a low punt. They don't even have a man back, which probably is not a bad idea. So the ball is downed at the 20-yard line. First and 10, Lee County. And at this point, guys, you got to think a, a, a touchdown probably puts this thing away. Am I wrong? Oh, no, I think most definitely. If Lee scores again, I just don't see New Hanover's offense being able to create that many scores that quickly. Another right. touchdown. Another yeah, touchdown. yeah, Another touchdown. yeah, it got to be a touchdown. Yeah, got to be sure. a touchdown. Be interesting to see if New Hanover adjusts. You know, A.J. Bullwear's broken loose on him twice up the middle in this 3-4 defense. Doesn't look like New Hanover's adjusting much right, from it. Johnson, Bullwear up the middle. Bullwear breaks one tackle, then gets a face and mask. Got a face mask. mask. Yes. So he gets a couple on the on the carry and is going to get more yardage on the face mask foul. 55 seconds go clock stopped in the third. I think this is a five or 15 yarder? I think he signaled five. Okay. No, personal 15 foul. 15 yarder. Wow. All right. 15 yarder. That's a big personal call. Personal foul. That's a first down. I tell you what. Take Lee County all the way out across the 35 yard line. Ball be placed at the 37, first and 10. That's big. Colin Johnson barking out signals to his mates. Clock running. Johnson hands to Bullware. Bullware plowing ahead. Now finally taken down. Give him about a yard on the play. <laughs> and with the clocks being synced the way they are, if Lee County so desires, that'll be the last play of the third quarter. I'm interested to see if Coach Burdue wants to run another one or if he wants to take a look. Looks like they're going to take a look here, going to a trips formation to the wide side. 17 seconds left to go, so they got a little bit of time to get set. See what they're looking at. Now they look they're not in as hurry. though nah, they're going to call gonna it roll a it into the call floor. it a quarter and flip the field here. So at the end of three, the Lee County Yellow Jackets up 20 to nine on the visiting number two seeded New Hanover Wildcats. We'll be back to see if Lee County can hang on and move on down the road to Raleigh for a state championship next weekend. We'll be back right after these messages. It's my favorite time of the year. Football is back. I would like to personally invite you to come down for your next new or pre-owned vehicle purchase. With one of the largest new and pre-owned inventories in the area, come see us today for discounts that the competition simply can't match or beat. If you drive in Sanford, why not buy in Sanford? Come see me, the deal maker. Come and get that big town deal with that small town feel right here at Crossroads Ford and Sanford. Welcome back to Paul B. Gay Stadium here in Sanford, North Carolina. This is the NFHS Championship Game of the Week, the Eastern Final, brought to you by Crossroads Ford. Sanford, North Carolina, Paul B. Gay Stadium, located right smack dab in the middle. Sanford, the county seat of Lee. Well, Lee has Lee numbers. County. You know, this is one of two high schools in the county, public high schools. Everybody in town is a Lee County fan tonight. A.J. Bullware dragging tacklers, pushing that pile. He'll pick up about four on the place. Third and five coming up. Um, Lee County coming out in a trip stack formation there. And, and they had numbers advantage. New Hanover only put two over there, so. If Lee comes back to this later, see if uh, they can get an advantage on that. All right, 11 and a half minutes to go in the ball game, and, and, you know, we keep overusing this, but New Hanover's got to get a stop here. We keep talking about what New Hanover has to do. They really need to get a stop here. They are all man across the board right now. All right. Great time for a Tyreek McKendall superstar play. And the throw is out there and caught. Is that Berdicia? Berdicia. Yes, yes, it, it is. is. Making an appearance. 
coming up with a big first down big catch. First down. Yes, sir. 11-11 to go and a first down for those Yellow Jackets. And that clock just keeps right on ticking. Here we go. And Lee County, not a team that gets vertical in the passing game anyway, so they can run their offense and run clock. The ball doesn't touch the ground very often. All right. The hand is to Bullware. Bullware into the middle of the line and will get about three on the play. Clock continues to run inside 11 minutes. I know I said it before, but if Lee gets into a third and four, third and five, watch for Colin Johnson to pull that out of that zone play. They are giving him no respect whatsoever. He could almost take it to the house. Well, and so, you, you know, it's interesting, Rob, because if it depended upon which game tape you watch, if you watch this guy from last year, you watch him for the first six weeks this year, you may not even realize that's an option. Had they watched any of the last five or six games, they'd probably be respecting that a little bit more. All right, pulls it out. Oh, and right through oh, the hands of Tim Lett. Tim Lett has Clock to Clock stops with 10.31 to go. He might still be running it. He held on to it. I think he got a little ahead of himself. That was RPO, I think, Nathan. It was. It was. He read that outside linebacker, saw that he was coming, had the inside slant. Third and seven. And this cover two that they're, oh, sorry, rolling down into man. It's giving him a, giving him a nice cushion for the slant. But we're coming out of the ball game. And into the ball Larry game is Baldwin. Larry Baldwin. Interesting. I I have not seen Baldwin play on defense once tonight. Blocking back. And this was he in there as a blocking back? No, that's oh no, that's that's McKendall. That's it's not Tyreek him anyway. McKendall. It's yeah. McKendall in there, and that goes nowhere. So all of that for nothing. Yeah, the two looks like a five from the side, but I was mistaken. The sophomore Tyreek McKendall in there for that. And that stopped the clock down, running down toward ten minutes to go. Lee County playing this one pretty close to the vest. I tell you, that second down play, though, you'd like to have that one back. Oh, Tim yeah. Lett makes that catch nine times out of ten. All right, Underwood into kick inside of ten minutes. New Hanover looking for a splash play, run right by Underwood. Fair catch signaled for back at the seven-yard line. So nice punt from Trey Underwood to pin New Hanover back. But New Hanover's got the ball back. Need to get moving in the right direction, down 11. And if you're the Lee County defensive coaches, love that decision. Got a long field to defend, field position in your favor. Uh, got one of the best defensive lines in the state. Real good opportunity for Lee County's defense. All right, Colin Nixon, or excuse me, Chase Nixon. Senior quarterback running out of opportunities here. Nixon takes a snap under pressure. Evans doesn't get a hand on it. And the play is the eaten up. Aiden Brady on the reception doesn't get much, maybe a yard, 940 to go. And Nixon is getting the ball out so fast now. You can tell he is not comfortable sitting back in that pocket. Had to almost sidearm that ball out there past Desmond Evans. That young man is not liking his position right now. <laughs> and I think Lee's got forced negative yardage combined on all the screen plays by New Hanover. All right, ball at the nine-yard line. Clock ticking down toward nine minutes left in the ball game. Chase Nixon from the gun. Marshall in motion. There's the jet sweep. Back. Here's the pass coming. Nope, now he's going to tuck it and oh. cut it back. Turns it inside, has nowhere, nowhere to go. He was looking down the field for Brady. But both of the defensive backs on that side of the field chased. He was the only man in the route. Nowhere for Marshall to throw the ball. Third and nine. Once again, really good understanding of Lee County's defense. Just reading your keys, doing what you're supposed to do. Run a man off late. A little yeah. confused how that wasn't 12 in the huddle. Third and nine here. Eight and a half minutes to go. Nixon moving men around. They're going to run out of clock here. And that's the last timeout Burned New Hanover had. Wow. Clock stopped, 825. New Hanover has exactly zero timeouts left. We'll take a quick break while they talk about it. Be back with the conclusion of this ball game. You're watching the NFHS Game of the Week. 90 years ago, First Bank was founded. You know First Bank, the one where you are greeted by name, the one dedicated to the community, and the one born in the heart of the Carolinas. We help our customers.
customers to realize their dreams by providing financial solutions and building trusted relationships. Hi, I'm David Fashi, and we are First Bank. All right, welcome back. Something wild to the NFHS game of the week. All right. This is a big time third down play here for uh, New Hanover. Brandon's headed over there. All right. We got nurses, we got doctors, we got Army guys running All right, out Chase there. Chase Nixon throwing it up there for Makai Stanley and right through his hands. A lot to ask for the big man. Fourth and nine coming up. Apologize for kind of losing track. There's apparently somebody has suffered what seems to be a heart attack. So medical attention seems to be a, have made its way over there. Big third down stop for the Yellow Jacket defense here. New Hanover, fourth and nine, pinned back on the nine-yard line, being forced to punt the ball. All right, no chance of any sort of fake here. Tyrick McKendall back there near midfield. Low snap, oof. Jordan Batts almost got to it. McKendall probably just wanted to get away from that. Nope, fields it on a, on a hop, and it'll be forced out of bounds at the 42-yard line. First and ten jackets, 8.09 to go, and they can smell it now, can't they, guys? Absolutely. And I tell you what, Leah's going to get the ball in incredibly good field position here. One touchdown on this drive, I think, puts the nail in the coffin. All right, here we go. Colin Johnson, senior quarterback, 37-2 and two as a starter. A.J. Bullwear has unprecedented numbers running the football here at Lee County. These guys won a state championship to cap off great careers, and they're eight minutes away from it. With an 11-point lead, ball at the 37-yard line. Hand us to Bullware inside. Bullware stacked up, nothing going there. New Hanover's about tired of seeing that play. No timeouts for New Hanover, so Lee County, wanna, they, they want to keep this clock running as best they can. New Hanover can't do anything about it on this side of the ball. Inside 7.50 to go, 30 on the play clock. Colin Johnson will be – there's no chance he'll snap this thing before five from here on out. Clock down at 15. Johnson gets him set, moves Bullware around in the backfield. And this is where – Man in motion over. fakes. Now he's throwing it out there. Wow. Ooh. Alston reels it in. That's the second time they've run that for Alston tonight. Last time he dropped it. He holds on to it now, picks up about a yard. Clock ticking inside 7.20. And a new play clock, 30 seconds now. And that it, is the value of making that tough catch. You just reduce this game by 40 seconds by doing that. All right, clock will be down in so well inside seven minutes by the time this ball is snapped. Johnson gets the signal from the sideline. Play clock at 10. Gets everybody set, surveys the field. Hands, no fakes, throws, Ooh, nice and ah, I tell you, gave himself up. But that clock keeps right on rolling. Yeah, Bertasia with the catch, but he went to a knee to make it. So the clock keeps running. Looks like the offense is going to stay on the field. Six and a half to go. Clock will be at six when they snap this. Lee County kind of finding themselves in oh, no man land. Well, they have moved the. They have moved the. I never saw a flag. Well, they haven't moved the sticks yet. I'm confused as to what's going what? on. White Hat's looking like he wants to tell us something. You see a flag? Are they going to mark it I off? I don't see a flag. I don't either. What in the world? It's a personal foul of some sort. Personal, personal foul. foul. Roughing, Roughing the, the passer. passer. Wow. Wow. I got to say, I didn't see I it. I didn't either. I didn't see it. And they, uh, you know what? <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> There's somebody else didn't see it either. Dylan DeMock. The new Hanover head coach over there is beside himself right now. But, hey, Lee County folks, they're not going to complain. Big field position gain there for the for the Jackets and a first down. You know, they'd have been about fourth and two there. Do you go for it? Do you punt it? What's the call there, guys? You're kind of no man's land there. I like your odds of going for it personally. 
Um, but, you know, that's a hard call. You, With the way Trey Underwood's been punting the ball, you could put that ball there in the 15 yeah. and in. You know, field position is a really big thing right now. All so right. Well, it won't matter. We're 618 to go with a, a Lee County first down, ball at the 15-yard line, huge call. In a game where a lot uh, – I, I would – I think it's fair to say that more – than not have gone against Lee County. Some suspect calls and spots throughout. They get a, a relative break. They're going to reset the clock here at 640, gentlemen. That's the reason for the delay. All right, 20 to 9, 640 to go in the ball game. But it Lee should County, start. There it is. Lee County looking for that dagger. They do start at 20 to go on the play clock. Johnson. Lee County starting to feel it, guys. Oh, yeah, they are. Johnson. 12 seconds left on the play clock, barking out signals. Johnson, just as the clock strikes three, now he's going to run. Johnson, nope, gets it out of there. Bullware on the catch, going to be forced out of bounds at the five-yard line. Very close to another first down. Let's see what the call is here, and that's a first down. First and goal. A Pintair first down for the Jackets. Inside the REMAX red zone, 6-11 to go, looking for the dagger. Here comes the knockout punch. I feel like we haven't called the REMAX red zone tonight because Mr. Bullwell just keeps breaking. Yeah, down. Lee County hadn't spent any time in the red zone. They just no, they score haven't. from midfield. All right, 6-11 to go. Clock stop. They haven't wound the clock after they set the chains. So that's kind of interesting. All right, Johnson. Hands to Bullwer. Bullwer with his touchdown third jacket. touchdown of the night. 6.07 to go. 26-9. And this one's just about over, ladies just and gentlemen. about. The Lee County sideline knows it. The Lee County crowd knows it. And the new Hanover side of the sideline, they got to be getting that message as well. 26-9. 6.07 left. Drew up Trey Underwood on to add the extra point. Gentlemen, you're starting to see some movement across the way of the new Hanover fans. That's a long that. ride back to Wilmington. Yep. Hold is down, kick is up, kick is good. Didn't want to do an early call again. 27-9, 6 to go. We'll take a quick break, be back with the kickoff. You're watching Lee County march on through to the state finals here on the NFHS Game of the Week. Being good at what you do takes commitment. At Sanford Contractors, we've been committed for 50 years, committed to high quality construction services and trusted partner relationships. We started in 1969 and through smart and consistent growth, now offer our partners more services than ever before in bridge construction, commercial building, site development, and utility construction. Sanford Contractors, building with trust for 50 years. Learn more at SanfordContractors.com. You are here watching Lee County march their way to a state championship in Sanford, North Carolina. This is the NFHS Championship Game of the Week brought to you by Crossroads Ford. Guys, there are going to be a lot of residents of Lee County that are going to sell, tell people years from now they were here. There's no doubt we've been here. We've been here. We've That's got right. the documented evidence to show Lee County putting this thing to bed. 27-9, New Hanover needs a miracle. 6.07 left in the ball game. Trey Underwood to kick off. Kick is away, and it is fielded by Aiden Brady at the five-yard line. Brady trying to find something big in the – he's had a seam, but wrapped up. Nice tackling there on the play as he's brought down by number 31, Dorian Lamble. Now this is, you know, statistically, this new handover offense has had a great year, scored a lot of points. And that Lee County defense has held them to three field goals. No touchdowns. You know, and I think this all start, has started up front with the front four of the Lee County Yellow Jackets. Now the linebacker play by T.J. Johnson has been outstanding as a sub for Larry Baldwin. But this front four of Lee County has really dominated this ball game. Here comes pressure off the edge. Pocket collapse and makes it down. Again. Down as DDP makes his mark on this game. 5.50 to go in the ball game. New Hanover moving the wrong direction. And I'm telling you, gentlemen, there is no better feeling for a defensive line when you're in this situation and you can just tee off and go get the quarterback. Gentlemen, the, the state pundits, the observers around prior to the Cleveland game, 
the common refrain was, well, how good is that Lee County defense really? Well, now you know. Nixon looking, has a man. Back to the original line of scrimmage, third and 11 coming up. Did get out of bounds to stop the clock. Nice little advantage for New Hanover, but still a long way to go. All right, clock stopped at 520. And here comes that pass rush. Yeah, you can just feel it. They are ready to roll. All right, third and 11, 520 to go, down 18. Senior Chase Nixon needs to make a play. Drops, throws, gets it out, picked, oh. picked, picked. By 34. Oh, and oh. delivered a hit at the end of it. And we got flags on the play. T.J. Johnson, Coach Purdue said before the game, T.J.'s our guy. TJ playing out of his mind. Well, they're going to be put back 15 yards on the block of a defenseless player at the end of that. But, it, gentlemen, it is not going to matter. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, and, and, hey, once again, tremendous pressure by the Lee County defensive line. They were having a party at Mr. Nixon, and he had to get that thing off really quick. Offense back out on the field for the Jackets. And now the exodus on the far sideline is picking up a little steam. And you know. And kudos to the folks from New Hanover that made the hike up here from the beach because that is not a short oh, yeah. drive. I mean, that's not on a Friday on a night. drive. And um, they have a great fan base. I've got some friends down in Wilmington. And, you know, they have an outstanding fan base. They really support their team down there. And they've had an outstanding year. Oh, certainly. I mean, you get to a state semifinal, that's saying something. They don't let just anybody play in these ball games. No, sir. <laughs> All right, Colin Johnson, hands to Bullware. A.J. Bullware breaks it outside, trying to get to the edge. Stand out back. running. Stand Still back. Still running. Oh, you got oh, to turn that up, on. A.J. All right, forced out at the 15, clock stops with 5.04. He's going to hear about that one in film. And Coach will be happy that he has at least one thing to bark at him about. You know how you guys are. <laughs> you don't want anybody to play a perfect game. You're not wrong. <laughs> 5.04 to go, first to 10 jackets inside the REMAX red zone. Yet another Pintair first down. Colin Johnson from the gun. Hands to Bullware. Bullware stacked up. Nice play there by the defensive front. Number 44, Rashad Rogers. We haven't heard his name much tonight. Um, the middle linebacker. Led the team with 12 sacks from the middle linebacker position. I like that. That is pretty good. Now, gentlemen, if you get this clock to about three minutes to go, uh, you can pretty much take a knee without any timeouts from New Hanover. So, uh, if you're not going to score, that is the next best thing. All right, everybody checks their wrists. 420 to go, second and 11. Fakes to Bullware, looking across the middle. Throws it, got a man. Touchdown, Tyrick Ty McKendall. McKendall. Ball game. That's, That's it. 33 to 9, 411 to go. The sophomore, Tyreek McKendall, gets the touchdown. And this one's as good as over, ladies and gentlemen. Lee County will be going to Raleigh to play on December 14th, 7.30 kick at Carter Finley Stadium. I'm going to be there. I don't know about you. I got nothing else to do. <laughs> i tell you what. I don't now. <laughs> Underwood on to add the extra point. Now, nah, pre snap whistle. Oh, Let's get on, out guys. of here, guys. So, gentlemen, this is the feeling. If you're on the Lee County sideline for the last four minutes and 11 seconds, there are not many better feelings in the world than right now. To be honest, I've never been in this situation. So, I'm absolutely enjoying it for the first time. 
Oh. I will say it looks like next Friday night or next Saturday night at Carter Finley, the Lee County Yellow Jackets will be taking on Weddington, who is laying the hammer to Watauga, 49-14. Wow. All right, 34 to nine. What was the score again? 49 to 14, wow. Weddington. All right, Weddington trying to repeat. Wow. The only thing better than winning one championship is winning back to back, right? Weddington trying wow. to pull it off. Yeah. But they're gonna have to. They're not going to put – I'm going to tell you right now, they won't put up 49 points against this jacket defense. Absolutely not. No, no. Watauga had a two seed coming in at, at, uh, with two losses. Wow. I don't, know, I don't know how they do stuff in the West. Out that way. I don't either. And the uh, party is starting, I believe, Chris. Yes, sir. I believe it is. And deservably so. I tell you what. As it should be. You know, we talked about it at halftime. The entire Lee County community was here. These stands were packed. We had people all along the fence line. Um, this is what Friday night high school football should be. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Underwood kind of looked like he might do that little pop. Oh, they're not going to kick it, Pete. The only guy on this field that can score from this, from this, on this play is standing back there at the 10-yard line. That ball's not going anywhere near the 10-yard line, gentlemen. I'd expect it about the 35. And I was wrong. And okay. we both <laughs> were. <laughs> now, he does directionally kick it, and it is not to <laughs> it is not to Jaheim Marshall. It's to number eight, who oh, who's cuts got it up. Head full of steam. And still going. And 37-yard line, and by the time it's all said and done, number eight on the return. Should have pooched it. Uh, Chris, to your point, I mean, that got a little dangerous. Tyron Jones should have hey. pooched it. Uh, not impactful to the game, but certainly would have dampened the spirits a little bit. No, I'll give you the ball at the 35-yard line any time over that. Oh, yeah. That's a little bit too, uh, too stressful at this point with a 25-point lead. All right. 36-yard line. New hand over. Thought we might see Chase Nixon give way, but he's not. He's in there. Senior's gone all the way at quarterback, with the exception of Stanley coming in and taking some Wildcat snaps. All right, Nixon throwing it down the middle to nobody. Jaden Chalmers oh, back there, yes. picks it off. 24 to nothing. That's the cherry on top. That was a hope and prayer throw, Nathan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the only that was Wildcat. Ready to go home. The only Wildcat yeah. close to it was Marshall and and I think Even he, he's not that fast. Yeah, I think he kind of slowed up at the end. So, um, with three minutes and 55 seconds to go, if Lee will get one first down, they can pretty much call it home. All right, Marcus Gray checking in at tailback. Well, he got a got a timeout on the field. Player down. That's Duran McCoy. He's going to be all right. He's jogging he's off okay. under his own power. 3:55 to go. Lee County up 25 on their way to Raleigh to play for a state championship next weekend. New Hanover putting a bow on what's been a, a really good season for a group of kids, most of whom already have a state championship ring that they earned back in 2017. They do. But this is a senior-laden team. I got to be honest, guys, I thought that with all of the seniors on both sides of the ball as the core of this team, a seasoned coaching staff, I expected them to play a clean, t a clean game. We've seen it with personnel issues um, time and time again throughout this game. And and in retrospect, looking at these two teams, Lee County's a better team on paper anyway. All right, Marcus Gray doesn't get the handoff. Colin Johnson pulls out of a tackle, gets spun around. I'm sure the coaching staff would rather he not get himself hurt at the end of this game on an RPO. But, you know, with the possible exception of the Jack Britt game, which was really early – in New Hanover season, they really hadn't been tested much either. So, no. you know, that was the first game. They kind of had to bow up and, and handle some adversity, and they really struggled with it tonight. Agreed. Agreed. And of course, Jack Britt, a 4A school from Fayetteville, not a bad ball club. No, no. no. Eight and five, they finished the season. Playing a tough conference, have yep. a lot of really good competition. <laughs> yes, play. they do. All right, Marcus Gray still in there at tailback, I believe. Yes, Gray gets the carry, turns it up, going to get nothing here. Second turn down, second down turns to third down, clock inside three minutes to go. You know, gentlemen, I know we're towards the end of the game, but there have been a lot of really slow whistles on plays tonight. 
And you would think from a safety standpoint that the officials would be blowing those whistles just a little bit. Well, the only time they've been quick on the whistles when they were whistling, you know, trying to stop celebrations, yeah. all of which seemed to be from the Lee County side. And Colin Johnson just came off the field as a senior going to his first state championship. 38 and two as a starting quarterback, gets to play in the game every quarterback wants as a senior. Will Patterson comes in and will take the last couple of snaps here, third down, fakes to Gray, keeps, his, keeps it himself, fighting forward, and picks up about a yard on the play. That will run us down inside two minutes, and Lee County will punt this thing away one last time tonight. So New Hanover will get one more chance on offense, I think, before we call it a day. Doesn't really matter, though. I told you, Colin Johnson got himself taken out of that game on that last run option where he kept it and ran up in the middle. <laughs> he did. <Yeah. laughs> Coach said, that's enough. That's, that's, it. that's, that's it. enough. That's time, it. time to put you down for the night. Yeah. All right, 142 to go, 15 left on the play clock. Be about a minute 25 to go when New Hanover gets this kickback. They're bringing 11. High snap. Underwood gets it out of there. Nobody back. This thing will bounce around for a little while. Uh, bounces straight up in the air. Lee County shouldn't be in any hurry to touch it, and they let it die on its own. 123 to go in the ball game. And even a miracle can't get it done for New Hanover at this point. I think it's a physical impossibility. So can you give an entire D-line player of the game? I, I tell you what, it, you know, we can talk about that, but in the end, this is Des I, Desmond Evans' game. 100% agree. I mean, it, you know, that's not taking a thing away from Duran McCoy DDP and the rest of that defensive front, but Desmond Evans for the middle two quarters of this game owned this football game. Absolutely. On the mission, TJ Johnson coming in as a second stringer, JV kid brought up, could make a very good argument. A lot yeah. of tackles, a lot of big game tackles true and, that, and stop sir, the big game yeah. with a pick. I mean, that, you got an argument yeah. there. I want to remember for one moment a good friend of mine and Rob Patterson's, and I'm sure of yours too, Nate. Tom Wellborn, I hate that Tom can't be here to be a part of this championship run. Long time, long time. Mr. Football, as far as I'm concerned, in Lee County. And as much as he loved to see the Jackets win, he loved to hear Sweet Caroline even more. Absolutely. He used to say it was the best song ever written. He also used to say he was part of a Pop Warner championship team. Yes, he was. And he told me that story about six times a year, and every time I loved hearing it. <laughs> so, in honor of you, Tom, I want to make sure we said that. Oh, I know Tom is watching these jackets tonight. All right, change of quarterback for the Wildcats. Changes all over the place. They've cleared the bench over, over yonder. Raz Chandler with the carry there. We got a flag coming in from the from the white hat back judge. Let it go, sir. Let it go. Yeah, There's a minute 15 left in this ball game. I think it's a late hit um, on the Lee County defensive back. I didn't get a number, but um, that's what it's looking like. I think it was it inadvertent, to be honest with you. I think they were both going to the same part of the sideline and just sort of collided. I don't all think right, it was intentional at all. That'll be 15 free ones um, for New Hanover, a minute 15 to go. They need a field goal. They, they need a touchdown and a, I don't even know, a 20-point extra point. I don't know how that works. And, and if you're Lee County coaches, guys, let's just finish and be done. Yes. <laughs> let's just get to celebration. Keep everything in front of you. Keep them in bounds. Let's go to the house. All right, there's the snap from the gun. Running that option and again. And running it and drag down. Oh, they're going to get a horse collar. Come on. Oh, goodness gracious. Come on. You know, if you get them by both shoulders, that's not getting them from up under those doggone shoulder pads. I don't like the call. What do you guys think? No, I agree. I mean, it's. I know they're trying to talk about safety stuff, but that really wasn't even a safety call. Interestingly enough, seeing some option work by New Hanover, you wonder if that's not their JV offense that's being run right now, Nathan. Well, Des yeah, Evans checks right. out of the game. Larry Baldwin's going to check in and gets gets an enormous cheer as he comes into the ball game. You don't see that at the end of games very often. You guys uh, see come out, you see him come out to get that cheer, but Baldwin's going to check in to get that well deserved. The heart of that defense unable to really go tonight. 
And I certainly hope he doesn't do anything crazy while he's out there. No, but you almost feel like he's he's been such an integral part of this program. You want him to enjoy some of this fun as well. All right, here comes that student body left pitch. Yeah. And you see it again. They're there very, it is. Uh, and even the defensive subs for Lee County know what's yeah, coming. Yeah, I was going to say. That's chased down. And we get a play without a flag for a moment. That's good. Hey. All right. And this may be the last play of the game coming. They're going to have to run one more. There's a four-second difference between the play clock and the game clock. What a great way to finish your last game on your home field. Guys, I'm trying to keep it together. I'm so excited. I can't stand uh. it. All right. Yeah, New everyone Hanover. wants to win their last game on their home field. Yes. <laughs> New Hanover, one last play, and Lee County will have successfully completed their way through the eastern half of the three, A, three AA state playoffs. Here they come, ball over the middle, incomplete, ball game. Ball game. 34-9 is your final from here at Paul B. Gay Stadium. The Lee County Yellow Jackets are headed to the state championship next weekend. Woo! Welcome to the First Bank Post Game Show. There it is. Saw a little Gatorade pour there. Uh, kind of got got to have mixed feelings for your coach. Love the reason for it, but boy, that's got to be cold. Oh, man. <laughs> Steve's a tough guy. Steve Purdue won't uh, let it concern him. Uh, it was all jackets all night. This thing probably a little closer than it should have been based on what was going on in the field. Owen Daffer for New Hanover, my new favorite kicker. Three for three with three long field goals tonight. Kept it interesting in the first half. Second half, Lee County just pulled away. Guys, get in here for this tight shot. Let's hear what you have to say. Why we talk, we opened this season. Nate, your first time in the booth. Yeah. And I told you, this team was good enough to play for a state championship. And I tell you, I wasn't quite sold on it. I never said it on air, but but Chris and I had some discussions off, and I said, I don't I don't know if this secondary, this defense, and this offensive line can get it done. Well, Chris, I will be the first on air. I was wrong. Team is not perfect, <laughs> and if Weddington is going to beat them, it'll be exploiting that back end. Yep. You saw yep. New Hanover had a couple chances to crack this thing and, and keep it close where they just missed Marshall. They've got to work on that play on the back end of that defense. The, the coverage breakdown's there. Um, Weddington might be the team that makes them pay. But when Lee County can do what they want to do on the offense and run that dog on inside trap play a million times and you can't stop it, they're just going to keep running it. Didn't and that's what happened tonight. Never made an adjustment no. out, no. out of that three-man front where Bullware was just gashing them once it got to the second level. But, you know, keep in mind, if you're going to have a weakness on your defense, it gets covered up really well if your defensive line dominates games. Absolutely. Absolutely. And week in and week out during this playoff run, we have seen Lee County's defensive line step up against better and better quality competition and dominate games. Yeah, this was a game, to be honest, I thought Cleveland was sort of the de facto Eastern final, but I wanted to be sure that nobody was taking these guys for granted. Coach Purdue told me they've got real athletes. They got yep. D1 athletes all over. And they do, but tonight Lee County using the, you know, putting that home field advantage to use. Hey, they got athletes too. You got six or seven of these kids to be playing on Saturdays next year. Um, not the least of which is A.J. Bullware. 250 plus tonight, two gigantic touchdown runs, three touchdowns in total. He was the story for this Lee County offense, and they're going to the state finals, guy. Yeah, and, you know, let's give kudos to that offensive line too. I mean, you know, really made great plays when they had to. Gave Boltware the, the opportunity to get to that second level. And, you know, they did a yeoman's job tonight. And, and coming in, everyone was talking about big 74 from New Hanover, the 340-pound guy. I don't think all, we called his number all, once. All week, everyone talked about how much of a stud that man is and, and could Lee County's front line handle him. And, and tonight, Lee County's offensive line, this is the best game we've seen them play. They really took care of business tonight. All right, well, they're peaking at just the right time. I'm Chris DeLambert. Coach Rob Patterson, my normal play-by-place -play color guy. That's right. Top shelf. Top shelf work by both of you guys. And special thanks to First Bank. First Bank is the post-game sponsor tonight. 
We will be back. We don't know if we have the rights to do the state yeah. championship or not. Give them to us, Sinclair. Give them to us, National uh, North Carolina High School Athletic Association. Give them up. Give Just it to the home right crew. here. <laughs> give them right here. One way or the other, I'm going to be in Raleigh next week with these Yellow Jackets at 7.30. Carter Finley playing for a state championship. We need to get a ring. Guys, anything to add? Good luck, boys. Uh, good luck. Uh, the whole county's behind you. We can't wait for next Saturday. Go Jackets. For everybody, I'm out. Peace. Thanks for watching the Game of the Week on the NFHS Network.